続々登場 PC エンジンニューゲームそしてご存知天外魔境中身でどうだだから PC エンジンバイハルソン PC エンジンデュオ CD ロムがゲームの世界を変えた
スーパー CD ロムソフトのベストセラー「天外魔境2」リオだからできるスーパーエンターテイメント映画「ターボグラフィック16」「ターボグラフィック16」「ターボグラフィック16」「ターボグラフィック16」「ターボグラフィック16」「ターボグラフィック16」「ターボグラフィック16」「ターボグラフィック16」「ターボグラフィック16」「ターボグラフィック16」「ターボグラフィック16」「ターボグラフィック16」「ターボグラフィック16」「ゲートオブサンダーシューティング新時代の幕開け人類が未だかつて体験しえなかった空前絶後の稲妻が走るスーパー CD ロムロムで過激に登場ゲートオブサンダー Spreading a dangerous alien drug across the globe. They call it the Seed. El Archangel is hell bent on stopping the Raven Clan. My name's Quartz, and I should probably catch you up. Like these assholes. Your objective is simple. Stop the Raven Clan. And whatever you do, don't stop shooting.
風をまといてイカづちを裂き水を率いて火炎と化すファンタジーとシューティングの華麗なる融合今シューティング最終形態ウィンズ・オブ・サンダー「ドラボッちゃんはトマトが好き」「ドラボッちゃん春にスーパーファミコンで会いましょう」「ナグザッと」バイハドソン1989年「天外魔境」シリーズは世界初の CD ドムソフトの。Today, we mark a new conquest, this time focusing on a company that did a lot behind the scenes. Sometimes they designed their own games, sometimes they helped with writing or even assisted with graphics. Maybe they even simply ported a game. So, we begin our journey exploring the library of a rather mysterious company, one that brought us Far East of Eden, Galaxy Fräulein, Lords of Thunder, and Soccer Wars. Red Entertainment. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Sunday stream. New week, new RPG. We're finally done with the shithole game that is Legend of Dragoon.、Uh, I stayed up seven, almost seven hours to beat that. Seven hours. And it all boiled down to just not having enough restoratives. I wish I could have done it the first time. I think that would have been epic. But,、uh, but yeah, it was just, I was so ready to be done with it.、Um, you know, RPGs can be in incredibly hit or miss. And unfortunately, Legend of Dragoon is a big old miss. Big old three, three strikes. You're fired, put up on free agency, then put on inactive reserve and just fucked, right? It's just, it was a bad. <laughs> it was a bad game, I'm sorry. It's just so much exposition padding that it was, it was frustrating. It was an effort to get through the slog. And for an hour long fight, and you lose the hour long fight, and literally, I, I may have had him down like a thousand more hit points when he wrecked me. All because they have to fire off the Millennium Pack of Fireworks when it comes to status effects to. I don't know. It was, it was very irritating. But I'm glad that's done. And this is purple. I know you can't see it. It looks more blue. That's just because of the、uh, refresh rate of the camera. So it is purple in here, believe it or not. But、uh, this is the closest thing to purple that you'll be able to see, unfortunately. Let's see if we can. I don't know. Can I make it more purple? I'm trying to think. Have time to check Dragoon Verdict. What tier did you give it? I gave it a.、Uh, did I give it a D? I think I gave it like a C minus. It's because everybody was begging me to give it a C minus. Not because I wanted to like give it a C minus, because I think the game blows. It is one of the worst RPGs I've played. One of the worst JRPGs, at least.、Um, I'm glad I only paid like 20 bucks for it, because. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Okay. Yeah, that was not a.、Uh, that was not fun. I did not enjoy that. In the slightest. In the slightest. Alright, I need to make sure that the game list is fixed. Yeah, okay. I was,、uh, I was transferring all of my ratings over to a different sheet. That way I could use it for episodes. So. Alright, PS1. What did I rate it? Legend of Dragoon. I gave it a C minus. But I also had 150 people watching me, so I didn't want to be like, oh, this game, what if I fucking blah, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like the usual stuff that I would say to, to people that are here all the time, if that makes sense. But,、uh, but yeah. Alright, y'all ready to start the next RPG? I am. I'm, I'm, inter 
interested to see where it where it's gonna go. Grumble, grumble. I'm I'm just I'm fucking over it. Uh, this game is considered a Super Nintendo JRPG because that's what it is. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this. Let's do it. All right. All right. I'll see y'all on the other side.遠い遠い遥か昔世界の東の外れにジパングと呼ばれる国があったジパングは周囲を海に囲まれ春夏秋冬季節を問わず花が咲き乱れる平和で美しい国であった ジパングは周囲を海に囲まれ春夏秋冬季節を問わず花が咲き乱れる平和で美しい国であった何千年もの昔から今に至るまで しかしそのジパングもかつて一度だけ滅びかけたことがあったこの男のためにその名をマサカドという朝香はジパングを自らの望む理想郷にしようと目論んだ。そしてその土台作りとしてこの国のすべてを無に返すべく破壊に破壊を重ねた。第一はひび割れ。めくれ上がり川が枯れ海が干上がり空は漆黒の闇と化したそして豪豪と豊もす風の中で全ての生き物が死に絶えようとした時火の一族と呼ばれる者たちが Attention all units, attention all units, central dispatch, be advised, we have a 1075 in progress with multiple victims. Respond to raid alarm, all units respond, code 3. We'll give you that raid alert in a second, we just started the game. その人の果てついにマサカドの霊を地中に封印した時には火の一族のほとんどが死に絶えていた隠してジパングは平和を取り戻した光や水や大地や雲が蘇り木の芽が吹き水が湧き花が咲き空は、その青さを取り戻した。だが、その安らぎも、ほんのわずかな時でしかなかった。ジパングを我が物にせんと、まさかどの復活を企む悪の一団が、I feel like this is a very generic plot so far. Big bad evil guy dies, now somebody wants to resurrect him. That's literally the plot of Legend Dragoon.
ジパングのつくばと呼ばれる山にわずかばかり残った火の一族の末裔の一人がいたよう、ガマ仙人のじっちゃままさかとってやつはそんなにすごいのかうん気圧が動くとき大木は倒れ火が走りその後には屍しか残らんと言われておるへえそんなにすごいやつが復活したらこの筑波山も消えてなくなっちまうのかそうじゃ筑波山の鳥や動物もカエルたちもみんなまさかどのやつに消されちまうのかそうじゃ秋に実をつけるリンゴの木や栗の木も菜の花もみんな燃やされちまうのかそうじゃそんなやつ許しておけねえなうん地雷やそれでわしはお前に今まで苦しい修行を与えてきたのだおいらにまさかどってやつが倒せるのかおそらく無理じゃろうだったらなんでおいらは今まで修行してきたんだよお前一人では無理だということじゃしかしお前と同じ定めを持った者があと2人をこの2人と力を合わせればまさかどの復活を阻止することができるじゃろう冗談じゃねえよまさかどなんてやつおいら一人で十分だよならば行ってこいしかし火の一族二人と力を合わせねばまさかどには立ち向かえぬぞ Alright, here it is. Alright, let's go ahead and.、Uh, what's up, Oni? Let me fix this screen real quick. Do, 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 because we are,、uh, we want a corrected ratio for this. You never know what you're going to get, so let's just go ahead and. Yeah, there we go. And also give Tron a raid screen. Thank you so much for that raid. What is up? What are you up to? Can we get a shout out for Trun? What were you doing tonight? Tell us your secrets. Trun poops a lot. Just like all of us. Very regular person. Alright. Turn this down so I can hear myself talk. Alright, so Toad Hermit's house. We're gonna look at this interface because, like I said, this would have been in, in Japanese, right? This is a translated game. This game was never released in America, and the first four games were never. Released in America. So when we get to the next ones, we're going to have to manually translate it, which is going to be time consuming. But I hate pretending like an entire aspect of video gaming is inaccessible to me, right? I don't think anybody likes that. You know? The Japanese video game market is so unique because it doesn't make sense to America. There's a lot of cultural things that didn't come across the pond to us. So it's nice that somebody took the time. I think it was a whole team. It was like an eight year effort to translate this game. So I hope I do them some honor by playing this game. And I hope the game is all right. I'm kind of curious.、He、came to the firehouse for help because such trying much pooping. Can't stop farting. The gas just be. Let me guess. You just keep wiping. It's like a marker. It just never stops. <laughs> all right, we have talk, items, jutsu. Uh, status, mode, check, equip, and Kogama. I don't know what any of this is. Which descriptions will you view? I, I don't know what any of that means. We'll, we'll see as it goes. Programming lightsabers? <laughs> Alright, so this is. Oh, we got a walk fast button. You know, I love my walk fast buttons. Huge fan of those. Okay, make sure that nothing, nothing's on that. Okay, so I think this is a super CD ROM. It's froggies! We use the toad. The, the frogs talk? Cold of Diamonds, a bunch of demons who came from lands outside Japan. They brought all the countries outside Ruin, and now they're trying to make Japong theirs. Zira, you can't let those guys get away with what they're plotting. Beat the Diamondists! This isn't much, but take it. It's the money I've saved up to now. Make use of your travels. I got 20 real. 
You're a descendant of the Fire Clan, Ziri. No wonder you're strong. I hear you can't beat Masako, uh, Masakado, unless you're from the Fire Clan. Give it your all, Ziri. I can't do anything, but I'll be cheering you on from here. Here's a parting gift for me. Take it with you. Dude, I'm, I'm rich right now. The frogs are giving me their frog money. The ones trying to resurrect Masakado and take over Jipong or some, uh, the Cult of Daimon. The Diamondists want to use Masakado to smash Jipong into smithereens. After that, they must be planning to turn Jipong into their own utopia. Can't stand it, though. The thought. Ziria, beat the Cult of Daimon and protect Japan. Here's a parting gift for me. Take it with you. Where do they keep this money? What's up, Jess? How are you? Can we get a shout-out for Jess? Um, she's the newest member of Team Safe Space. We invited her, uh, yesterday. Ford, did you see the color Robo Cryptids? I did. I think they're really, really cool. Lately, Diamondist monsters have been showing up and attacking people around here, too. What's going to be your next thing? You should do, uh... You should do, uh... So you got the elements. You could do, like, Greek gods. That'd be cool. I'm curious to see what your next series is going to be. Is there a search button? I don't think there is. There's a walk fast button, though, and I like walk fast buttons. Which one caught your eye the most? I like the Chupacabra one. <laughs> Big Skunk. I've never even heard of Big Skunk, so I don't know what that is. Is that, like, the English version of Bigfoot? Because I can't say I recognize that. Tsukaba Village. Okay. Zirisan, It's full of diamondous monsters outside. Before you begin your journey, you should get what you need here in Tsukaba Village. Is that all you're going to say? Okay, good. So we're not going to run into one of those, those things. Okay, what do you say? Fighting against the cold of Diamond won't be easy. When you're tired, you should rest at an inn. You'll find record keepers at every inn. Save as often as possible. I got a save button. I'll be all right. Zirisan for the fire clan called Kenta is looking for you. Oh, Kenta? So there's a second member already. If you see a house with an open door, you should always go inside. You might learn something. It'll help you in your quest to defeat Masakado. In a second. Virtue is a value that measures how much of a true fire hero you are. Defeating enemies increases it, of course, but you'll also get it by helping people and meeting new friends. I love new friends. Lately, the Tanuki outside the village have become violent. They're even attacking people. The Diamondists must have turned the Tanuki into monsters. They're using their big old balls against us. You and Kinta-san sure are alike, aren't you? It must be because you're both descendants of the Fire Clan. I can barely tell you apart. That's racist. The check command inspects the area right in front of you. Keep in mind that it won't check what's under your feet. It's actually way more convenient this way. You'll see. Why? The diamondists need a lot of human souls to revive Masakata. That's why they deceive people into joining their cult. They do it to steal their souls! Kintasan of the Fire Clan said he knows a way to get past the Namuzu Shrine. Oh yeah? I don't know what the Namuzu Shrine is. Hey kid, give me your lunch money. I heard a giant catfish lives inside the Namazu Shrine. They say it's as big as a mountain. I want to see it. Okay. Uh, but what if Miss Sakato is revived? Where can we go? Is there even a safe place to hide? What's going to happen to me? What about the children? Zirisan, the diamondists have buried the Nam Namazu Shrine to the south under a landslide. I'm sure they did the trap you here in Mount Sakaba, knowing you're the fire clan. The only way to reach... Tsuchiura Tawa town is through the Namazu Shrine. Okay, so we're fucked. Gotcha. If Masakado is revived, every living creature in the country will die. Serious son, I beg you, stop the cult of Daimon before they revive Masakado. Okay. Who are you? Oh shit, they do look like just like me. They're like a black version of me. I don't trust you. Okay. Oh, we got two. <laughs> they do look a lot like. All right, let's check out all these buildings. See what they're about. Because we can save here too. I do like those transitions. Do you see it? It's a curtain, like a like a play. Good day. Would you like me to keep a record of your progress? No need to pay. It's free. Yeah. I love free shit. So far, I'm impressed. Skunk, skunk Ape is cryptic Florida is often heard of Bisfuck. I, dude, I live in Florida. I've never even heard of that. It's four Rio for the night. No, I'm not going to stay. Fuck you. It's too expensive. I only got 80. 
According to legend, Masakado turned half of Japan to ashes in a single night. I came from Suchiura town, but with those diamondist tanuki attacking travelers, I can't go back. Everyone's shying that Masakado's coming back, only the fire can can beat him. <coughs> Try a drink while awake. Come on, fire clan, get a move on. Okay. I'll try my hardest. The goon ape? <laughs> Sounds like something I'd call it. Hello? What's what's up with you? This is the house. My grandpa once told me something interesting about the Fire Clan. They're not just one clan. After they sealed Masakado, people start calling the three tribes that did it the Fire Clan. Oh, interesting. Alright, that, that door's shut. What's this? Our village giant tweezers are missing. They must have been stolen by the evil Tanuki of the Cold of Diamond. There's no way to make wake up Namazu without him. Why do we need tweezers? <laughs> Long time ago, a landslide buried the Namazu shrine, so the villagers used giant tweezers to pull out one of Namazu's catfish whiskers. The earthquake caused by Namazu's awakening cleared the path of the shrine. Alright, so I need to find giant tweezers. Hmm. General store. Welcome, welcome. It's my general store. Tell me what you need. Alright, so we got wares. Let's see what their wares are. We got toad oil, rope sandals, and a map of Tsukaba. That's cheap as shit, so let's go ahead and take it. Uh, I don't see... So without a manual, right? Without a manual, we don't know what these items do. So, just for shits and gigs, uh, I'm gonna pull up a walkthrough just for the items. No more, no less. If it exists. Uh, do, do, do. What's this game called? Tengai Makio Zirio. Alright, so it looks like we got three guides. Cool. Like I said, I only need the the items. I don't want I just need to know what straw sandals or rope sandals in this case do. And then we got toad oil. Is that our healing? Brother, you can't call it a walkthrough if you're not gonna tell me what the items do. You're just a you're just a, a bitch, okay? Tell me, tell me what the fuck the items do. Stupid. What what do the items do? What do the items do? Brother. You gotta, you gotta tell me what the items do. Shit pisses me off. Item list. There we go. That's what I want. I don't care about spells. I don't care about armor. This is what I want. This is what I want. Thank you. Alright, Toad Oil is our restorative and it heals 30. What about the shoes? That's a map. Yeah, I get it. You like ASCII art. You're so fucking cool. You're an idiot. I don't know shit about that. Total. Uh, uh, uh. Tanuki key. What are these sandals, though? Okay, so this involves speed? Okay, so it's speed. But some of these things are also dropped too, so. Okay. You gotta put it on your bingo card. Alright, uh. Let's go to the weapon store so we can get equipment first. Don't make my mistake. Remember to equip swords and armor that you buy. Oh, okay. Welcome to my armory. How can I help you? I'd like a leather helmet, a cloth katabira, and a long sword. Okay, so I can 
only control my character. Makes sense. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay. We don't have any any way to heal right now. We need what five Rio or four Rio to. All right, let's see what combat looks like. I'm assuming we're gonna get into it here. Ooh. Diamondus Tanuki appeared. What will you do, Zeria? Stare at it. Hmm. Oh, that's not bad. What's up, Lieutenant Simon Riley, 15 2016? How are you? <laughs> or LTS. We're gonna grind here, that's what we're gonna do. We don't wanna we wanna make sure that we're set up. Chase the pup. Oh hey! Been a while, how you been? Just grinding for a few levels. Tanukis have massive nuts. And also these guys are filled to the brim with parasites. I used to see these on the flight line in uh, Korea all the time. We would call them... Uh, what was it? Benjo Beasts? I think Benjo Beasts. Just gross, filthy animals. They're they're cute as shit. Don't get me wrong. They're they're cute. They're adorable, but they're nasty. They're every fucking bacteria that is possible to live healthily inside of them does. It's just gross. I'm kind of upset. My my jar is. Oh, my jar is peeling. I'm so upset because this is my favorite water bottle. So, as a parent, one of the things that I do is I hoard everything that my kids give me to include hats and mugs, and in this case, this is my Father's Day gift, and it's starting to deteriorate, and I'm very upset because I treasure this. I used to have a hat with a NES logo on it, and that, that started failing, so I had to turn it out, throw it away. Been doing good except for being on the New Zealand Police Forces radar. Why are you on the New Zealand Police Forces radar? What have you done? Did you steal one of their sheep? Kiora, you're taking one of my sheep! Oh, there's two of them now. What is this person that's with me? There, it's... You were reported missing? Oh, God. Why? You know, some people are missing, they just don't want to be found. I have a feeling that my wife would do that to me. If I just disappeared just for like two hours to breathe, she would probably like, call the cops on me. All right, so I'm not pleased right now with the fact that I'm not pleased right now with the fact that I've got a second person in my party and they're not doing anything. Like I shouldn't be carrying the weight. I have a second party member that is in the same clan as me, so it doesn't make much sense. Are they even showing up on the status menu? No, it's just me. So this is literally me carrying the weight of the world. You ran out in the middle of the night? How old are you? Because if you're an adult, you know, fuck it, right? 25? Yeah, dude, you're an adult. Do what you want. I feel like this is going to be a very grind-heavy game. Like a stupid grind-heavy game. I'm okay with it. As long as the game doesn't overstay its welcome, I'll, I'll be alright with it. This also was their first RPG, so... Cutting them some slack. 
It's really neat graphics for, uh... Well, think about it. This is one of the first CD-based mediums that you could play at home. This is the TurboGrafx-16 CD, and it's got great audio. In some cases, there's Redbook audio, but in but this one, I don't think that it is. And then we've got certain people rendering voice lines, again, which wasn't very common on CD mediums at the time. So I'm not complaining. It's just, it's very offsetting that I've got a second pers person in uh, the party, and that person isn't talking to me. That's just weird. Or isn't helping. We might not be strong enough to go in here. Oh god, it's a sword bug! What's a sword? Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, this might be too much. You've never heard of this game before because it never had an American release, probably. So unless you're really big on, like, obscure Japanese games. Oof, this is gonna be tight. Yeah, we're definitely not ready for this place. We're gonna get our fucking shit kicked out. Come on now. So I don't have any jutsus. Oh, bitch! I think we can get him. It's gonna be close, though. Close. Are we level two? We got one attack, one defense, one speed. Whew! That was gnarly. I don't like that at all. That was not good. Oh, you, you still got it. You got a fucking Interpol black on you. Okay, so we're only getting one one virtue here. So it might be smarter to try to take the cave. We're still not doing as much damage as I would want. Ooh, we got a multiple strike. Oh, so that's how we handle it. Okay. So there are crits, they're just called multiple strikes. Well, these tanukis are not doing it for me. Not anymore, at least. Easy. Alright, so... Does it tell us? Hold on, what's our check? There's nothing out of the ordinary. Okay, well, listen. It's level 2, 23, 26... Okay, so Virtue, 15 out of 24, so we can actually probably level up pretty hardcore on these uh, things. Guys, suggestions for my naval robot team? It's got to be one with converting robots to D. I'm thinking F-22. The Navy doesn't have any F-22s, and they also don't have any B-2s. That's the Air Force you're thinking of. But they do have F-18s. You could always go for an A-4 intruder. I would look into, uh, go to Wikipedia and look up uh, active naval aircraft. That's what you want. The only airplane that the uh, Navy shares with the Air Force is very few F-16s. B-2's a bomber, that's, a, that's the, that's the uh, Air Force and F-22. Nobody else has the F-22. If anybody else gets sold the F-22, then we're going to have a problem. <laughs> Internationally. The only reason I know this is because I, I work on airplanes for 11 years, for anybody who cares. And when we play airplane-based games, I really nerd out on it, right? 
specifically Ace Combat. Like, Ace Combat really gets me just going, because I get a chance to talk about, you know, a very large chapter of my life. By the way, for anybody who cares, overrides are open, as well as project changes. We have one DLC, one hack, and one override. One DLC, one hack, and one mod open. All right, what do you want, Zordon? What do you want? Let's see what Zordon wants. The last Gex game? <laughs> I'm pissed that I own it. I'm pissed that you bullied me into owning this shithole game. There's no, never any reason I should own both of the Gex handheld games. Ugh! Okay. Absolute trash. This is Deep Pocket Gecko. Yeah. Gex 3, Deep Pocket Gecko. You know, this is a formality. I should have already been able to do a serious slayer on this. I've been carrying that that in the back of my mind for four years now, Zordon. Four fucking years. Hope you're proud of yourself. Hope you're proud of yourself. <laughs> Gex 3. <laughs> Deep. Hmm. That's going to close out overrides, but project changes, they are still uh, available. They are at max cost right now. Here in April, they're going to drop down 20,000 points, all right? So they'll be down to the same price of an override, and then a month after that, they'll go down 20,000 more until we get down to, uh, I think it's 10,000 points, 20,000 points, something like that. Um, just because we do like to have some variety on here, I don't want to be forced to play Red Entertainment games for the entirety part of the year. I'm not one of those guys that'll be like, I'm going to play every game ever on the Nintendo 64, the U.S. library. I'm not me. Never been one of those dudes. Just not been my jam. But uh, that, is, that is open for anybody who cares. Look at this useless weight. This is, this is the Shayna of this game, isn't it? Do we get shoes? I forgot I have the map of Tsukaba. Let's take a look at it. Oh, that's neat. It's not labeled, but it's neat. Where am I? Okay, I guess it makes sense, because I know I'm in the top left. So we're in Tsukaba right now, but we're going to probably have multiple regions we go to. Seems like a pretty straightforward game. So now I got sandals. So what's y'all's initial impressions of this game? Y'all have seen about almost uh, 50 minutes of it. I'm curious. What do you think, Blue Nighter? Jiriya-sama. I don't know if I'd consider it Dragon Quest-y because Dragon Quest at least... I feel like this is more Breath of Fire. It's more Breath of Fire to me right now. Because I got a second character that does fuck all following me around. Oh, 
home. Yeah, these guys are too whack for me to to grind on. Yeah, I'm only getting one virtue from these guys. We gotta go into the tunnel. Gotta get some more. Oh, it's an Oni! Oni Danuki! This is a big bad Tanuki. virtue we get for this. Two virtue. Okay. Is this the landslide? Hello? Oh, shit! Two Oni Danukis! I will say, you know, the amount of enemies that they're stacking with us looking forward is it is very Dragon Quest. I think you're right like that. Uh, so that means that it's probably based on a system from wizardry. So you can tell if you ever play, if you ever, 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 ever play a, a JRPG, you can tell which system they were inspired by based on what you see right here. I've got stacked enemies. I got low rolls. So to me, this screams this is based on wizardry. If we were doing a traditional thing like one-on-one uh, -on -one fights, that would be more Ultima in some ways. Anytime you're dealing with stacked enemies, it's the wizardry school of thought, which I don't mind at all. I, I actually quite like it. I don't trust you. You're not going anywhere, Pawn. Oh, I leveled up, so I got... Huh. I did say this. Sakado-sama! Beat it in the face. This is cool. So, as I learned Japanese, there's certain words I recognize, but I wouldn't be able to read. Like, Kamenasai, I'm sorry, right? Okay. Kamenasai, Kamenasai. Inside the casket, you found the Tanuki key. Sweet. And I love, got some level from it, too. That's cool. Oh, that thing's fucked. Oh, wow, I can... That is a first. I've never seen that before. Have y'all? So usually when we get multiple attacks, we're attacking the same enemy multiple times. I've never seen it automatically jump between two. That's very efficient. That's extremely efficient. Hmm. Interesting. I actually do find that incredibly interesting. That's not something I've seen very often. Okay, well I want to go get some more healing if I can. Encounter rates are a little bit higher than I would want, but they're not like dreadfully hard fights. See, I, and I've never played any of the later ones. I've only played number one. Oh. Dude, 
Good dodges. Try a tweezers, we can tell, I guess, the old lady about him. <laughs> you and Kitasan sure look alike a lot of you, because, yeah, no, we're not. He was a doppelganger of me. Alright, who's giant tweezers, lady? Well, I mean, I do too. So what I'm worried about is getting stuck too far deep, depending on how, if we get into like multi-level dungeons and we don't have restoratives. That's just something I've learned throughout my years of playing these. Know anything about the F-35? Yeah, I know a lot about the F-35. What do you want to know? They're a massive waste of money. I know that the Marines fly them, the Navy flies them, and the U.S. flies them with different configurations. The Marines use a vertical takeoff um, format, while the Air Force and the Navy use different ones. Well, the U.K.'s Royal Navy uses it as their only jet. What's it like? Any good? <laughs> um, they want to use it to replace the A-10, but it's not going to happen. Um, it has incredibly advanced avionics to the point where I can't trick it with any simulation testers which really sucks for avionics. Um, one of the cooler things about it is they have this thing called the glass cockpit. So basically the way it works, uh, for anybody who doesn't know... I guess I'll fucking show you. So we have these things called HIMIX, a helmet-mounted queuing, queuing system. And the way that it works is that it's a big bubble that you'll see some pilots have. In traditional pilot uh, headsets, you'll see that it's just flat, right? It's flat. That is a Scorpion headset. We'll talk about that in a minute. That's not a normal one either. That's a Hemix. I need a, just a regular run-of-the-mill. Uh, do 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 do. That's Hemix. That's Hemix. All right. So this is a regular run-of-the-mill helmet. It's just round. It has a compression bladder in the back of the neck. It's called the Combat Edge, and it inflates to push. Uh, blood into our brain because when we black out from g-forces it's because of blood being drained away from our head right it's called a, a gray out so what that thing does is it forces air consistently in your mouth uh, it has built-in headphone and a combat bladder behind the head and it inflates then you've got what's called himix this is what this is it's a helmet mounted cueing system and what it does is there's two little projectors you can kind of see it right here uh, two little projectors that project onto the front of the of the thing and allows them to see basically their heads-up display when they're looking around. So they can see this 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 box over here. They can see all their pipper data. They can see their waypoints. They can see everything that's on their heads-up display, which is traditionally right in front of them, by looking around. Now on Apaches, like the helicopters, it actually tunes into the guns. So if they look over there and they target something, the guns will go which is, I think, the, it's pretty fucking cool. However, the F-35's Scorpion helmet lets them see through the airplane. <laughs> uh, it's, it's insane. Let me see if I can find a, a video. Basically, they can look up, and they can look down, and they can look straight, straight underneath, like through it, because there's tons of sensors around the F-35, uh, which is really, really cool. Uh, the F-35 also crashes a lot, because it's a piece of shit. This is one of my favorite F-35 crashes right here. 
Check this out. It's great. Look at this. This is a B variant, B model. The only one with a vertical takeoff. All right. So the first mistake is he's moving forward while still in vertical, you know, takeoff mode. So because of that, he bounces up. Then he hits his nose on the thing, which is never good, and collapses his nose strut. I don't know if y'all could see that that landing gear in the front. Let's give you play-by-play, play-by-play. B model going down. While moving forward, which isn't good because it's a vertical takeoff and he's, he's on a glide scope right now, which is a mistake. Starts rolling, realizes he's rolling, bounces up, then tries to cut power, thus falling on his nose and decimating the nose landing gear which goes rolling behind. I don't know if y'all saw that. Just shears it clean off. Boop! There it goes. Now, the turbo fan is probably, uh, probably destroyed. And a really interesting thing about the F-35B is that if it detects that there's something that's gonna kill you, it'll just shoot you off in outer space. Oh, he just crashed. Oh, shit. There he goes. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, if there's ever a, a bad condition, it'll do that. He probably tried to throttle up or it auto throttled and the turbo fan failed. So he starts spinning, 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 oh, spinning, spinning, and then. <laughs> oh, shit. There goes that chair right in oncoming traffic. No big deal. No big deal. All right, let's see the F-35 uh, helmet. Show you all this. This is pretty cool. Pilots who fly the F-35 fighter jet Pilots wear a helmet who fly that the can F-35. see through the plane on all sides yep. and is worth 400000 US dollars. Each helmet is fitted with noise cancelling headphones. These are custom vision, fit to the uh, pilot's head. Computer, and a TV screen like projector that displays live video on its clear visor. Yeah. But what really makes this helmet so special when it's combined with the sensors and exterior cameras mounted to the F 35 fighter jet, it gives the pilot the equivalent of X ray vision. Yep. So when the pilot looks down, they can see straight through their own body and the floor of the plane to the terrain below. The helmet also supplies such information as target identity and distance, and even advises which weapon to use. So when looking through the plane, if the pilot sees something that should be hit by a missile, or just wants to get a closer look, all he has to do is look at it to lock on, then flip a switch to zoom in or fire away. Because the helmet is custom made and costs $400,000 each, pilots don't get to use them during flight school and simulator training. It's not until they are assigned to an active duty F-35 squadron that they receive the most complex helmet ever made. See, that's why the PSVR 2 failed. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Let's see, uh... Let's, let's listen to some starter sequences. That really gets me horny, you know? So, F-15 has two engines and it's loud as shit. So, let's, let's see, start... Startup sequence. I don't care about that. Start the engines. <laughs> Sounds like a damn Hoover on overdrive. That's the initial spool. Hear that? You can hear that miles away. And he's starting up the other engine. And you hear that loud ass engine right there. Do they do an afterburner takeoff? They do. You might not be able to see the afterburners daylight, but nighttime afterburner, so cool. That's a mean airplane. F-15, in my opinion, is still one of the greatest fighter jets that are active right now. 
Oh, yeah, you can see the afterburner. It's a little red. So a bomber, what I recommend, the B1 Dragon Lady. That's a B1 Lancer is disgusting, brother. That's a disgusting, just oh, B1, brother. <laughs> Freudian slip. Uh, B1 Lancer. It's got four F-16 engines. It is a mean fucking airplane. Look at that thing. The U.S. Air Force has announced. Yeah, and they're retiring it because they're stupid. Look at that thing. Four F-16 engines. This shakes the earth when it takes off because it always takes off with afterburner. B-1B Lancer. The bomber was built to nuke Russia. Earlier this year, the United States Air Force yeah, the Dragon Lady is to mean. The or my bad, the Lancer. Lancer. Also known as the Bone, in favor of the new B-21 Raider stealth bomber. So I think this thing is interesting looking because it's shaped like a Peregrine Falcon going down, right? I don't know if y'all have ever seen a... A falcon tucking its legs to go after something. I know that they have a comparison picture somewhere. Yeah. So look at this. It's a genius design. It, I mean, if you're going to worry about something being, being aerodynamic, and I know the ratio is kind of off for this. So we'll go to this screen. If you're worried about something um, being aerodynamic, look no further than how birds look when they're diving. Because it's true. The, the reason why birds fly is the same principle of aviation. You've got thrust... You've got, uh, well, not in the case of birds, they're not outputting, you know, thrust, but uh, the four principles of flight are thrust, drag, uh, gravity, and uh, there's something else. I forgot. I don't care. I don't work on airplanes anymore. But that's aerodynamic as shit. <laughs> and so, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. F-22s are stupid. They sound like they fart when they start up. They go, whoo. <sighs> Whew. Oh, stop being so fucking dramatic. Not cool. F-22s, if you see them in person, I guarantee you they are not. They are squatty and ugly as fuck. Start your... Fart the engine. And then you got A-10s. A-10s sound like hair dryer. A-10 engine. <laughs> uh, do 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 startup. I love. This is Fairchild's. Yeah, all right. Let's see. F-16 afterburner. I want to see if y'all can see it at night. Oh, look at that. That's kinky. This will give you all an idea of uh, how big the afterburner is. This is an F-16. I don't know. Area 51. This is the Duluth Guards. Look how long those are. I miss I miss the military so much sometimes. This is my favorite when you get, when you go into the hush house and they just have the engine on a thing. All right, that's ignition. Yeah. You'll see the at the end of it. There's those things are called the uh, the nos pauses, the nozzle positioners, and it'll close like a turkey feather. And now that it's tight like a butthole, fire! <laughs> it's what's going to come out the back of it. Pure fire. Shoot out the fire, Daddy. I need to see it.
I think it opens up again a little bit for you. There's the afterburner. One thousand six hundred degrees of pure freedom right there. That's the Jersey Devils too, hundred seventy seventh fighter wing. It was always a treat to be able to go to uh, places like that. I miss it. What's up, Jared? How are you? If you get a shout for the good Jared, that's a that's a friend, a friend that I've known for quite a long time. We're playing uh, Tengai Mike Ozeria, which is Far East of Eden, the first game in the franchise. For anybody who doesn't know, translated for our pleasure. It is an RPG. Belly is rumbling to see if you got the you got the Mississippi mud butt. What's going on? God dang it, Papa! <laughs> Making my cheeks red. You got the squirts. Oh shit! The champion of Grandma's house. Radioactive mouse versus <laughs> mutant rat. Oh, no wonder I couldn't use him in my party. He wasn't really on my side. I guess that makes sense. In some stupid world, it makes sense to me. All right, let's go down here. We got the Tanuki key. What's this? There's a large casket here. It's locked tight. Okay, so let's see if we can use the key. You lift the lid of the casket, there's a pair of giant tweezers inside. Oh! Now I'm level four. Okay. Let's talk to a catfish. <laughs> Speaks Japanese? <laughs> Alright, let's piss him off by yanking out one of his tweezers that he probably doesn't regrow. Let's do it. He's probably gonna be like, <laughs> In Japan, instead of going, ow, they go, die, 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 die. What's up, boo? How are you? How are you and Miss Jinxie doing? It's been a while since I've hit up either one of y'all. It seems like a pretty straightforward RPG for what it is. It doesn't look too complicated yet. They couldn't get the uh, the encounter rate down though. This is on TurboGrafx-16 CD, specifically PC Engine uh, CD, only because this never came to America, unfortunately. Which makes sense. There's a lot of uh, Japanese cultural stuff in here that Americans have been like, huh? You know what I'm saying? So. Makes sense. Diamond Acolyte. Ow! Get fucked. Toad oil, nice. Those are expensive. I love free stuff. Jinx and I are good. Happy to see. You. I'm glad. Earth snake. That's a that's a snake, all right. What? It, very pretty. I think it's a be very pretty game. Dun, 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 dun. 
You like it, JK Ham? You like him? Good. I do too. I am speaking to YouTube as well, so don't freak out. I'm not talking to the voices inside my head. Yet. What's this place? Hello? This is terrible. The diamond has forced Kouman Sama to retreat here from Mito. That is crazy. What did the diamondists have to gain from Masakado's return? I don't know what it could be, but it has to be something terrible. Uh, Kouman Sama believes in the legend of the Fire Clan that once sealed Masakado away. He said that should a hero of the Fire Clan appear, he will give them his sword, which he treasures like his own life. Ooh, that's me. I can't believe it. Even Kouman Sama had to flee Mido. These diamondists must have taken over the whole place by now. I'll kill them all dead. One day, Kouman Sama will stand up to the diamonds, but until then, he hold, he will hold this town and just wait for an opportunity. Sounds good. What's in here? Hello, lady. Kouman Sama is a kind man who loves these lands of Sukaba more than anyone else. How dare those dirty diamonds drive him out of Mito. If I were 50 years younger, I'd teach him a lesson myself. Ugh, my blood pressure. Okay. Uh, B1 is just Air Force. Navy doesn't... I don't know if the Navy has any bombers. Usually Air Force is a bomber. Okay, let me grab you a... Let me grab you a thing. There you go. Refer to this. This will be your best friend. Because uh, we don't... There are no bombers. They don't do bombing missions. The closest thing to bombers they have is F-18s, and it's the Super Hornet, not to be confused with just the regular Hornet. And then they've got nothing but EW airplanes. Uh, the Hawkeye is really cool if you want to put a disc on the back of something, and then shit ton of transports. They're big on helicopters, like the Super Stallion, the, this. This is a death machine. If you ever see this, run away, because you don't want to be on it. This thing has killed more Marines than members of Al-Qaeda. Uh, they have 22 F-16s. But no, no bombers. They don't. They don't run bombers. That's a, that's an army thing or an air force thing. Very careful. He's a master of deceit. Well, I'm gullible as shit. So I was literally walking around with a bad guy the whole time. So come on, Samo. Get anyone in the audience is very open-minded. Is he? How much you want to bet? Come on, Samo has been like taken captive. The sword is a lie. Komon Sama had the eastern bridge blocked off to prevent the diamonds monsters from crossing it. Pathetic as it is, it's the best he can do under the circumstances. It is pretty pathetic, isn't it? What is this? It's a warehouse? Hey, welcome to the warehouse. How can I help you? Oh, fuck! That's so cool! Okay, so I'm assuming if I die, the penalty is lose money, which is what they did in Dragon Quest. Hmm. Interesting. Alright. Okay, so I'm gonna need to write down, we're gonna get our notebook. Because there is no way to compare the equipment that we have. So might as well play it safe. Just write it down. Uh, so we have a sword. Clothing. Helmet. And what, feet? Alright, so we have, the, the, the way it's marked is hands, hands, body, helmet, and feet. It's a very simple system. You don't need it to overcomplicate it any more than it needs to be, so good on them. Alright, so we got... Long sword, 
which was 15. Cloth, Kitibata. We have a leather helmet. And then traditional rope sandals. Alright, so the sword is fine, but we do want the shinobi. We can't afford it yet. Oh, I think we're gonna have a bad economy, guys. You're a fire hero, right? Please, you have to save Komosama. He's in the castle. I beg you, help the poor fellow. Okay. Zaria's son, right? I'm Kumigiri Hamlet. Though, well, I guess it doesn't mean anything to you, huh? Just remember this, we're all on your side. Don't worry, you'll understand soon. I don't know if I trust you. Master Fetzer, known as Bokuden, used to live in our country. Unfortunately, we don't know where he is now. We only know if he's still alive. Oh, Nar. All right, what are you selling? So the traditional things. Okay. The same thing as the other store. That's fine. Is it still five to stay here? Seven? This is the Holiday Inn? You just played uh, Aladdin on the Genesis, got to escape stage with you boulders playing in HD. The graphics are gorgeous. They they remade it in HD. Good on them. Capcom's one of those companies that actually cares about remastering the older stuff, and I, I'm all about that. I heard there's a small village beyond a bridge east of town. I think it's called Kumagiri Hamlet. Okay. Nice. Zuri-san, when you're in a hurry, hold button 2 while walking. That'll increase your movement speed. Button 2, so for anybody who doesn't know, the PC engine, the controller is very strange. There's no A and B, there's no X and Y, there's no symbols. It's just 2 and 1. 2 and 1. Let's check under the bed. I don't trust you. We don't have any jutsu yet, do we? And we don't have this Kogama thing either. What is Kogama? The wildcat our navy uses is kind of cool. I know nothing about foreign, foreign militaries. Komansama said that if you hear the fire clan appears, he'll give the order to lower the bridge. Well, that's me. I'm that guy. So this is going to be a dungeon, right? No? This is Tsuchira Castle. Komasama's upper floor. Please, come right in. Okay. You alright, bud? Yes, yes, I will, old man. Shiraya. Alright, we got the AoE sword. The blue sword? That's what AoE means in... Japanese, right? Pretty sure that's what that is. This is uh, the PC Engine CD, yeah. 
I don't remember if this was super CD. I don't think it is. I think it's just regular CD, but... Let's see. Uh, equip. Owie sword. Aoli? No, no, no. <laughs> A-O-I. Aoi. Aoi. For sandwiches. Pretty sure that Aoi means, uh... So the thing I can't do is I can't see the stats of the weapon that I have, and that's concerning. I mean, I know that my attack is 12, so I'm going to assume that my attack is based off the sword. It just makes more sense. Whew. I can't click on that right now. You can put it in Discord, I can check it on my phone. I don't want to keep taking down the right screen. My whole right screen's taken up right now. Aw, oh, thanks for loaning in the bridge, Daddy. So kind of you. What's this? Yeah, just put it in Discord. I'll, I'll check it out real quick. The sword's not that strong. I'm still doing three. Where's it at? Where are you gonna put it in? Pictures? What's this building? Hello? Are you a hermit? Bokuden. Oh, what's up, Bokuden? Uh, whatever, just tell me whatever channel you put it in when you put it in. Yeah, screw it. Let's learn a special technique. I'm all about that life. <laughs> Fuck you! Are you serious? So there it is. That's the question that I had. Now, I don't, I'm not going to use save states, but I will hit load for the sole purpose of there is no way to load our save. We'd have to reset the system by hitting H uh, and then choose the load, which I don't know if it'll work. So we're just going to assume, uh, yeah. Also, we need to always put our money in warehouses. That way we don't lose our money. Anything else to say, old man? Alright, so we're gonna have to level up before we can talk to Bokuden, because Bokuden will smack our asses with a spatula. It's free to save, so let's just go save. What up, Nick? It's actually pretty good. Pretty straightforward, just a generic RPG. Um, I like it so far. I think you might like it. I mean, like I said, it's just normal. It's a normal run-the-mill JRPG. Very Breath of Fiery. Alright, let's look at our map. Well, it, it's kind of in the same vein. Alright, so I don't know if that's a city over there. Looks like it might be. Small town? Ah, screw it, let's go. Ah! Two Earth Snakes! Fled in terror? They don't know me.
Okay, so there's another. We're not pooped. Wukamura. I might have to take a break to check and see if he took a shit on himself. Oh yeah, he pooped his cat. Asshole! Yeah, it takes, it takes place in feudal Japan, uh, which is cool. Uh, for anybody who cares, we're back on Red Entertainment now that the RPG stop is over. Alright, I'll be right back. I'm pretty sure he pooped his kid all the way I've over. played a lot of Sega Genesis games, not as many as I would like to, but that being said, I understand what to expect from the Sega Genesis, and as such, today I'm going to cover, in my opinion, the top 10 easiest games on the system. Now, little ground rules. I won't be mentioning edutainment, nor will I cover novelty games that can be beaten quickly. Instead, I'll be solely focusing on games with substance that are easy, games that can be casually played, and, you know, maybe even beaten within what some folks might consider a reasonable amount of time. This doesn't mean that the games won't be absent of any challenge, because every game has some level of challenge. These are just ones that are approachable and fun. Let's begin. The 16-bit era of gaming was dominated by quite a few specific genres, right? RPGs, platformers, beat-em-ups, and more importantly, tons of shooters. Thunder Force 3 is the first game on our list today because in comparison to many of the other shooters available not only on the Genesis but others, this one is incredibly approachable fun and it has a badass soundtrack as well. Many of the games in this franchise are phenomenal, but 3 and 4 in particular are the best. I did opt to put 3 on this list instead of 4, but I would encourage you to check out both of them. To me, there are certain elements that make Thunder Force stand out against the other competitors, like Gradius, and that's because when you die, the only weapon that you lose is the weapon that you were currently using, at least on the normal difficulty, which doesn't leave you at a total disadvantage like other titles would. You're not being relegated back to level 0 of upgrades and being shit on, right? So if you want a solid horizontal shooter, give Thunder Force 3 a shake. This game is an oddity because it was created by a company that only made three games, Sigma Protech, with the assistance of Cyclone System, which if you don't know is an offshoot of ICOM, that only made five games. It doesn't look the prettiest, and in comparison to other Genesis games, it is rather old. The Genesis was released in 1989 in America, this game was released in 1990, so we have a glimpse at the early ambitions of developers on the Sega Genesis. Shadow Blasters itself is a side-scrolling platformer, but we can play four different warriors that each have distinct attacks and abilities on their journey to take on Ashura, who decided to offload his demon horde on Earth. Now in Japan, this is a difficult game, and that's different from the usual formula when it comes to porting games. Traditionally, Japan gets a game and says, hey, fuck are you, America, and gives us the hard versions, not in this case. It's actually the opposite. Japan got the hard mode, we got the easier mode. It's much more approachable, more playable, and if you want to check out a more obscure game on the system, I encourage you to check it out. Rocket Knight Adventures is a masterpiece by Konami on the Genesis, and I believe it's because we have a very lovable protagonist that can stand his ground, not only in the video game world, but also in the professional marketing world. Sparkster, the person that we play as, or the animal that we play as, was used fairly heavily by Konami as a pseudo mascot for a brief moment in time, and that's because the game was massively successful and fun. As Sparkster, we can jump an attack by whacking enemies or guiding an energy projectile. We can charge up our attack and launch ourselves like a rocket, hence the name Rocket Knight Adventures, which also doubles as a way to get to inaccessible areas. We have health pickups, generous lives, and four different difficulty settings if we want a more casual experience or a more difficult experience. Now there was a modern Rocket Knight game, it was simply called Rocket Knight, but it was relegated to the Xbox Live Arcade. It was meant to be a revival of the franchise, but as is expected, it didn't turn out too well. 
I love this game. I didn't think I would because you know it's fucking Mickey Mouse and I'm 31, but I love this game. It's a charming, witty, lofty platformer featuring the most famous mouse in the world. What else could you ask for? In the game we play as Mickey. We go into Ms. Rebel's castle because Minnie was kidnapped and we get her back by fighting trivial bosses in unique rooms. And honestly, this game turned out to be a lot better than I thought it was going to. You're always going to be on your toes because you never know what kind of enemy will be thrown at you next, but the game is very fun even for my kids. The levels themselves are designed fairly well, the game isn't incredibly long, and it was remade in 2013 from the ground up, and it looks wonderful, and it plays just as well as the original. Feel free to check it out. Golden Axe is a rite of passage game on the Sega Genesis. It's a simple hack and slash that was prominent in the arcades as well as the home console Spectrum. Golden Axe itself does have an odd history of releases because the plot has a massive divergence that happens between the arcade releases and the home consoles. But Golden Axe itself, the first game, is just a port. So if you want the true Golden Axe experience, feel free to check it out. Just understand that things, they're gonna get weird after. Plot-wise, we're fighting bad guys in the land of Uria, where a douchebag by the name of Death Adder captured the king and the princess, and three warriors of legend are sent off on a high fantasy journey to rescue them, literally killing anything and everything that they can along the way. This is the American dream. Or should I say Urian dream? Now, as a single-player experience, this can be a tough game, especially near the end, but the good news is, it is multiplayer, and from my personal experience, if you introduce another player to the mix, the game becomes not only more fun, but tolerable. The most recent game in this franchise was a nonsensical stupid game called Golden Axe Beast Rider in 2008, and it effectively killed the franchise. We checked out Mickey Mouse, now it's time to check out Donald Duck on his silly adventure in Quackshot. Another platformer, Quackshot, has us playing as Donald, who finds a piece of a map in Scrooge McDuck's library. To him, this is the path to riches, so he sets out to become a treasure hunter, outfitted with a versatile gun. That's all I'll say. Plungers, gum, popcorn, <laughs> any projectile you can find. All of these aspects, by the way, are collectible, but the normal shot we get is the plunger, and it's unlimited. We travel to a few stages, Duckburg, India, as well as Egypt, and we find more and more clues concerning the whereabouts of this lost treasure, which turns out to be a golden necklace. And yeah, it's good. I enjoyed it as a kid. Now, Donald does float a little bit. Like, the controls are kind of sketchy, but it is stupid easy. It was easy enough for me to beat as a kid, but much like Castle of Illusion, this game is a novelty fun game that I think you'd have a good time with. I love Streets of Rage as a franchise for numerous reasons. Number one, to me it's the pinnacle of Yuzo Koshiro's compositional energy, right? I feel that Koshiro is the Tim Fallen of the Genesis era. Number two, it's an incredibly fun game that is made even more fun by hanging out with your friends. Number three, to me it's the best example of a beat-em-up, period, in that era of gaming. Now, all things considered, this game is challenging, so think of it from the perspective of having a player two. The game is night and day if you have a well-coordinated player two. End of discussion. Tackling this single player with stock settings can be daunting. Hell, even putting the max continues in lives can be daunting, but multiplayer? Cake. Streets of Rage 2 continues the story from Streets of Rage 1, where the syndicate, consisting of Axel Stone, Blaze Fielding, and Adam Hunter, kick the dog shit out of Mr. X. Mr. X is back and he's got this new person called Shiva. We have to do it all over again. To me, Streets of Rage 2 is the best in the franchise, which was quiet for a long time, at least until 2021, when they dropped Streets of Rage 4 on us. I don't think anybody expected that. I know that I didn't. Many of the easy games for me involve cooperative play because, like I've said once and I'll probably say it a hundred more times, some games are just fun and easy with a friend. Hyperstone Heist, however, is easy to me both by myself and with a co-op partner. In fact, the game is borderline laughable if you have a player too. 
It's incredibly short as well, it can be beat in less than an hour, which is another trend for many beat-em-ups of the time. Think of this game as the Genesis version of Turtles in Time because in some ways it's heavily based on it. It's very similar. It's not the same, but it's similar. You know what I'm saying? Different name on the same homework, right? To me, it just boils down to what platform you owned at the time, you know? If you had a Super Nintendo, you had Turtles in Time. If you had a Genesis, you had the Hyperstone Heist. Plot-wise, we see April O'Neil reporting the news like always, and then Shredder pulls a Max Headroom intrusion incident and shrinks Manhattan, as is the power of the Hyperstone from Dimension X. Time for some turtles to go kick him in the ding-ding. You know, normal Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stuff. TNMT has a long lineage of fantastic games going all the way back to the NES era, and honestly, if there ever was a time to be alive, to me, it was the 16-bit era of Turtles games. I loved him to death. Sonic the Hedgehog is very much a hit or miss for me. Sonic 1 was advertised with the idea of gotta go fast, but also gotta get punished for going fast. And I didn't like it. Sonic 3 is too long for its own good, especially if we combine it with Sonic and Knuckles, which is how it was meant to be played, but Sonic 2 to me is a fair middle range for the amount of nonsense that we're willing to endure. It's balanced, more refined and polished, and pretty decent. The levels are slightly longer, but at the end of the day, I didn't mind it. Speaking of levels, we have 11 zones which consist of 20 levels, or acts, in total, and this time we have Tails tagging along. Now I know that I complain about Tails in another video that I did, but in reality, he's kind of a welcoming addition because if you have him tagging along, then you can use him for an extra hit. There is a multiplayer aspect to this as well, but I can't remember if it's that weird split-screen racing bullshit or if Player 2 can just hop in as Tails and play in a co-op setting. I want to say that it's co-op, but don't quote me. I beat this by myself. You would know, and if you do, I encourage you to tell me down below. Sonic obviously still thrives to this day, and the most recent proper Sonic game was Sonic Frontiers, and I'll be honest with you, kind of impressed. Sega historically has been doing some nose beers with Sonic Team, so... I was impressed. To some, this game might be too kiddified to check out, but unfortunately there's a lot of hard-ass games on the Genesis. This is an example of what isn't. It's not Disney, instead it's Tiny Toons, which is an offshoot of Looney Tunes. If you don't know what Tiny Toons is, then think of Looney Tunes with just alternate personalities and traits which were retconned to fit into the universe. Instead of Bugs Bunny, we have Buster Bunny. Instead of Lola Bunny, we have Babs Bunny. Same with Plucky Duck and Daffy Duck, Hampton Pig and Porky Pig. You get it. Well, they made a game on the Genesis, and it's shockingly fun for what it is. Now, it's not some groundbreaking, universally acclaimed title, but as a platformer, I found it tremendously fun, and it doesn't really hold your hand. I mean, there is some difficulty to it, but it's approachable. That's the word. That's the special word of the day, right? Approachable. Basically, we go through each level finding Go Go Dodo to the end, and then it's over, at least from what I remember. There's been quite a few Tiny Toon games, with the most recent being Buster's Bad Dream on the Game Boy Advance in 2002. Wise from your grave. Stupid. I'm not a big fan of Altered Beast at all. I hate this port with every single fiber of my organic being, and I would rather soak my nuts in battery acid than ever play this again. But I would be wrong if I didn't say it was easy, because it is. The levels are incredibly short. You don't really need much skill to beat it. I beat it in like 30 minutes, and if you know what to expect, you're good to go. The principle is that we play as these hunk Adonises that punch and kick two-headed white wolves that give us these orbs, chalked to the brim with a potent mixture of latent homosexuality and steroids that makes us power up! And obviously, we become stronger. And as we get more orbs, we eventually transform into a beast form, which can be a were-dragon, a tiger, wolf, or golden werewolf. And if you play the Famicom version, you can even become a shark. Yeah, imagine that. Altered Beast was a big deal arcade game from Sega, and it was ported to damn near everything, and like I said, I don't particularly like the Genesis version, but it is an easy play, and I do suggest you check it out, at least for novelty's sake. It's funny too, because this game was massively successful, and they abandoned it. Sega. And those are my top 10 easiest Genesis games, in my opinion. What did you think of this list? 
Are there any more games that you might add? Feel free to let me know down below. Who knows, maybe you'll introduce someone to an amazing game that they can add to their library. If you did watch this video all the way, then you're home. Feel free to hit that subscribe button because we would love to have you here. You'll fit in just fine. Also, don't forget to hit that like button as it does help boost visibility for the projects that I work on every single day. As always, from my family to your family, good energy, good vibes, Fortify out. Sorry about that, my dog had a straight up, like, blowout. <laughs> so I had to, like, really clean it up good. I'm sorry. And then I tripped and I, like, yanked out my aux cable, too. I don't know, puppies can be such assholes sometimes. Like, he's, he's figured out how to, that he needs to go potty outside. I let him out three times a day. Yeah, it was Flynn. Flynn, like, had a nuke-powered shit on the floor. I was very upset about it. Oh, is this a different town? Kimigiri Hamlet, okay. We'll be waiting for you, Zuriya-sama. This is Kimigiri Hamlet, your ally against the Diamondists. Wow, you must be Zuriya saying The chief told us about you. We're all your allies here. You can take it easy. What's up with this frog? The statues in the middle of our hamlet represent the Fire Clan. Everyone here respects the Fire Clan. Good luck, Zeria san Very adamant about that. Kagama, one of the frogs in the Toad Hermit's Plows, came to our hamlet looking for you. Oh, he was here a moment ago, but he can't seem to hold still. He's a brave little frog. Can you believe he came all the way here on his own? Well, that's who we're looking for. We have a menu option for you. Oh, is this him? Hey, Zeria, you look well. Traveling alone is dangerous, so I decided to come with you. I can reach any Kimigiri Hamlet I visit at least once in a single leap. I'm incredibly useful. You'll see. Now let's go kick Misakado's butt. Oh! Th so is this fast travel? I have a fast travel option now. That's awesome. I, I need your help. I'm the son of the priest of Kashima Village Shrine of the East. The diamond has turned the sacred white deer, protector of a village, into stone. Okay, so that's a quest. So we got two quests that we need to do right now. Bokugata in his uh, thing in the top left. Thank you so much for the dollar fifty nine. I appreciate that. You're a sweetheart. Uh, and then we've got the village to the east, which he didn't tell us the name of. Kashima Village. Okay. Kashima Village. And there's something about a deer and a stone. So now I gotta figure out how to unfuck the deer statue. That's cool. He just had a big old diarrhea blast because he's an asshole. I really do like your channel. I think thank you so much. It's very kind of you to say. I just try to we try to have fun here and uh, play everything ever. So we got an inn. No weapons store, though. But we might have different sandals here if we go check. They sell footwear here. White toad, toad oil, which I'm assuming is better than regular toad oil. White crane plume and a map of Tsukuba, which I already have. 
So what does the white crane plume do? That's something we got to check. Again, we don't have the manual for it, and even if we did, it would be in Japanese. So we need to see what what all of these items do. Uh, that's our weapons. We need items. Items. White, white bird feather warps to any visited Kumagiri. But isn't that what our guy does? So what's the point of having him? Seems kind of odd. Hello. Oh, it's thieving school. You can steal the money successfully. You get to keep it for yourself. Think of it as a game and have fun. But don't forget your quest to defeat Masakado. I want to go to thieving school. This is a thieving school where you can improve your thievery in order to help defeat the cult of Diamond. Head inside, avoid the instructors, steal the money from the casket. Okay, so this is a game. A game in a game. Okay. These are the blindest ass instructors I've ever seen in my life. So do I need to escape? They're blind! Play out to be some Genesis sometime. I don't think it's that bad. Oh, I, I do. <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> I've already beaten it. I got one. Okay. This is a thievery school where you can improve your thievery in order to help defeat the cold of diamond. Inside, avoid the instructor, steal the money from the casket. Or is it going to get harder and harder? Why can't I run if it. Oh! I wonder how many times I need to do this for it to like to get the thieving skill. So What's the point of that? Just to give me one gill to pop if I'm in a, in a pinch? I don't get it. Welcome to the inn. This cheap. No. Good day. Would you like me to keep a record of your progress? No need to pay. It's free. Yeah. I would. Uh, if I really wanted to, that's a, that's a lot of work for just one... <laughs> from one Rio. I was hoping I got the, the steel ability. Famous fencer called Bokudin lives in the smallest west here. He's looking for a worthy successor to a special technique of his own design. Yeah, the sword slash. From what I've heard, Chief Komagiri, the founder of our hamlet, was a pupil of the Toad Hermit, just like you. Oh, wow. Now we gotta grind. I want that technique, but we gotta be strong enough to get it from him. Ow. What do you mean I haven't learned to steal yet? Pretty sure I have. I right, level five. Hell yeah. Love that. By the way, for all my YouTube viewers, should I have any here other than Trollbot and I think Dumb was in here? The Dumb was in here? Uh, tomorrow we're going to release the top, my top 10 Sega Genesis soundtracks. I'm up to number 2 in terms of like the editing. Uh, my premiere has been acting really fucking weird lately, so... It's been annoying. I'm trying my best to work through it. Ukamuro. 
Oh, he's dodging me. That's sassy. You like my Sega vids? I'm excited. The Sega's got some heavy, heavy, uh, well, the Genesis has some heavy, heavy, uh, soundtracks. Much better than Super Nintendo, as far as I'm concerned. Super Nintendo is more melodic. The Sega Genesis is where you could really get that progressive rock, heavy, grindy, just girthy bass. It was, it was really good. They cared about sound when they designed it. I don't think that Nintendo really did for the Super Nintendo. This game's a grind fest, but I'm okay with it. I'm alright with it. I will. Alright, so level 4, we weren't strong enough to take him, so we'll, we'll try again at level 8. Get that special technique. Holy shit, what are you? You got some change! Oh, Kagama's fighting too, that's cool. But it's an auto attack. What is that, man? Seven Virtue. We need more of those. Those guys are awesome. Yato! It was incredibly overly reverbed. They had to have really good speakers to make the Super Nintendo sound good. Otherwise, you didn't pay attention to it. In my opinion, the NES sounded better than the uh, Super Nintendo. I mean, that's just my opinion, though. I know that might piss some people off, but... I don't really give a shit. Give me three of them. I want to take all three of them. I love that it shadows out the other ones so we know who's doing more damage to us. I like that. Job, Kimura. A Kagama. All right. So, what's this thing about Kogama? What does he do? Oh, look at that! So, with Kogama, I don't know if we're gonna need any of those plume feathers, unless Kogama gets like killed in the next spot, and then we'll need those feathers. But I mean. Is what it is. I'll tell you who knew how to do it. Tim Fallen knew how to do it, but he only, his game never got released. Yuzo Kashiro, Norio Hanza. Uh, his first name's Norio. I don't remember the last name, but it was a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, people who made the shooties, the Rudy Moody, Rudy Tootie McShooty games. Alright, Moo, take care. Thank you so much for swinging by. Batman on the NES music was legit. Yeah, but that's Kodaka. Kodaka was uh, Sunsoft's composer. Kodaka had a, a lot of say in the music. Hmm. <sighs> 
We're level five. We can't keep taking six hits over and over again, so I don't know if we're gonna be strong enough to deal with them. Takes a lot of time to grind. This is very dragon. Dragon warrior esque. Alright, so we can afford the Shinobi Katabira. I might make one. You know, I, at the end of every month, I do put a, a video like giveaway thing in the community page. You should do that. I'll I'd gladly talk about that. All right, we're going to go for the Shinobi Katabira. Shinobi Katabira, which is 60. And I think we're good for everything else. Yeah. Snap it to a Slim Jim. Let's go. So I think that the body and the head is what calculates our defense. Well, none of it's equipped. Shinobi. No wonder I was getting my shit kicked in. If I don't push the button, it doesn't count it as being equipped. Of course. Of course. Ooh, what's this? Kamai Taichi and a Diamond Prince. Oh. Alright, so these are dangerous in combination. What is that? Is that a cat spirit? Thanos them! in here. What's this? Is this another hamlet? No, this is the Kashima Shrine. Okay. The white deer, the guardian deity of Kashima Village, was turned into stone by the diamondists. Won't survive long without his divine protection. What should we do? I don't know. You tell me. You're the expert. You must be Zeria san with the Fire Clan. The brave hero is standing up against Masakado. If only you had come a little sooner, you could have saved the sacred white deer. The priest might know a way to break the seal. You should head to the shrine at once. Okay. I like quest lines. Those are good. No one knows when it was, but in the age when the gods created Jipong, it's said that they sent down divine white beasts to watch over the lands in their place. Our sacred white deer is one such beast. Nice! Diamond has turned our sacred white deer into stone. It was the stupid tanuki that led them here. If I were a man, I'd turn this tanuki into soup. Ugh, hate him so much. You don't want to eat a tanuki. That's disgusting. I once fell from a tree and got hurt, but then the sacred white deer healed me with his divine powers. Please, you have to save him. I'll try. Where's the divine deer? Ah, uh, the rock the white deer seal size red with a die. Yeah, symbol written on it in yellow. It's so glaring as if the demonists are proud of their evil. I hope someone defeats them soon. Trying my hardest. The diamond has feared the divine powers of the white deer, so they turn him in stone. I could hear him sorrowful voice uh, coming from within the rock. Oh no! Welcome to my armory. How can I help you? Let's see what you got. So they have a samurai sword, but I don't know if the samurai sword is better than the Iowa sword. We have shurikens. We can buy shurikens for five. Okay, uh, let's sell...
the cloth katabira. We can also sell the longsword. All right, we need to. We're gonna look at a, a walkthrough just for the items. This is the only reason that this is gonna be up. I'm not actually using it to uh, get through the game. It's just we don't have the manual. The manual would have been in Japanese, and obviously I can't read it. So the what's the Ioe sword? Ioe sword, I think, is the novice sword, which is still four. Lord Kumon in the Suchiura Castle. I think that's where I was, right? So it's not its not any better. So the Samurai Katana is better. Yeah. Ah! You scared me! What the fuck? It was so organic. It's been a while since I've heard that right into my ear holes. That was gross. Just a big old parp, man. <laughs> okay, so uh, we got... I'm pretty sure... Let's see. Samurai Sword is six. So Samurai is, is better. And then leather helmet won't do anything for us. We really can't hold that many things, and that concerns me. Let's go to the warehouse. The warehouse is back in the other side of the town, unless there's a warehouse here. Zaria-san, right? I'm from Kumagiri Hamlet. I have new intel on Diamondus. Diamondus Tanuki are waiting in ambush for you in the northern part of the village. I'm sure you'll be fine, but be careful, Zaria-san. Oh, thank you. Our sacred white deer is sealed within the rock at the back of the village. Diamondus are guarding it. Be very careful. It's going to be our first fight, isn't it? You look like a priest. Yep. Goofy ass. Once read in the old book that the voice of the Fire Clan is a part of release all evil seals, and I'm really confused. There must be some sort of hint in those words. I don't know exactly what it means, but I'm sure that you'll be able to solve the riddle, Zaria Sama. Okay. I do have a frog companion, and his name is Kogama. And he follows us everywhere we go. And he talks. It's interesting. It is pretty good, so far. And he attacks for me, too. Look at that. Just two damage. We're beating up raccoon dogs. Tanukis. Remember those binjo beasts in Korea? Drunk stumbling and you see eyes in the distance? It's great. Okay, yeah, so our attack goes up. What's up, Sibo? How are you? Welcome to Tingo Maikyo. Tingai Makyo. Chilling out my night. Good. Glad to hear that. <laughs> this is a very obscure game. Very, very obscure. What's up, old man? We have a 1075 in progress with multiple victims. Respond to raid alarm. All units respond. Code 3. This is Live 42. Retain 4. Respond that raid alarm from old man Sim. Stand by.
What's up everybody, my name is Fortify, I'm a retro variety streamer, I play a bunch of games from the 70s all the way to now, always on True Hardware. Right now we're playing Tengai Maikyo Zaria, which is also known as Far East of Eden. It is a very obscure uh, TurboGrafx-16 CD JRPG that was not released in America. None of the games were up until a fighting game on the Neo Geo, uh, Kabuki Fighters or something, something along those lines. Um, it is fun, but it is a first two, so no tips or tricks in the off chance that you have enjoyed this game. Um, it's set in feudal Japan, so a lot of the cultural mannerisms really wouldn't have translated well to America. If you think about uh, Mystical Ninja Goemon, there are already like 15 games before we got a good solid game in America because of that, right? So when we're approaching this, think of this as a Super Nintendo era game on a CD, because it is, it's a 16-bit game, um, with voice acting, good quality voice acting too. That's awesome. That's how you do a boss fight. Did you did you get like did the hair on the back of your your neck raise when you heard that final organ thing when Sefka came down, the the final form stage four, that just ba ba, and you're just looking at a god. I mean, this guy has transcended reality, and he is he is a god. That was a boss fight, and it's even as a phased boss fight, it's one of my favorite boss fights in the history, hands down. It's just a really good one. sense. If you're not following Old Man Sim, please do. Fantastic streamer. Plays a lot of RPGs, at least from what I've seen. Uh, or he may just play whatever he wants to play. Uh, thank you, Meow and Kia Pandora, for coming over on that raid. I appreciate it. What's next for you? Yeah, right? <laughs> you know what's funny? What's funny is that he, uh, he goes through it. Did I beat the game? This game? No. I beat Legend of Dragoon, though. Beat Legend of Dragoon. We, we're just talking to uh, Old Man Sims since he raided in. Alright, let's get back into this. Mushroom Ke Kingdom Fusion? Interesting. Is that, a, is that like a ROM hack? Now, this is only available in Japan. This is the only one that, uh, that was translated, so we're kind of lucky here. I have 54 monies? Bitch! Dude, I'm broke. It's a horrible game. Legend of Dragoon is trash. Alright, we're gonna store items. We store up to 32 items, okay. I'm gonna store this sword because, you know, he did give me that sword and I don't wanna... I don't wanna get rid of it. So you missed the very end? You- it was a five-phase boss fight. That's what you missed. And it was asinine as asinine could be. That's the best way to describe it. It was the worst five phases of just bullshit. Just the of the worst stuff you could deal with. Instant death, instant status effects, just millennium millennium pack of uh of stuff. Yeah, it's a ROM hack. There's characters from different NES, SNES, and 8-bit like 8 and 16-bit characters. Over 200 made worlds using assets from those games. Interesting! That's very inclusive for what it is. Surprised Nintendo hasn't been like, No! Don't do it! Oh! I've heard of that. Yeah, no, I've seen that. And they mix in the, the musics, too, right? They they bring in all the music. I, I think I saw Talofted play that. Enjoyed watching you play it. I was so ready to be done with it. Like, I knew, I knew the moment that we got to disc four and we were at the point of no return and they forced me to do all of my characters' backstories simultaneously. Right? Simultaneously. Just, you know, content dump in the last two hours of the game. That's when you know they fucked up. And they didn't even say who their QA testers were. Yeah. I like when you get really annoyed and mad. Is that weird? No, because that's exactly the thing that people enjoy from me, and I don't know why. <laughs> I think it's because I'm I'm taking the struggle off of your shoulders. I think that's what it boils down to. I'm very candid, you know. I'm very straightforward in my videos. I don't hold anything back. I'm very transparent about how I felt, and I'm not afraid to step on toes. I don't, I, I mean, shit, I put, 
<laughs> I put Final Fantasy VII in a list of the worst JRPGs, and that apparently caused a bigger rift in the world than when Moses parted the Red Sea, but... How many hours do you think it took you to beat that shit? It took me exactly 42 hours. 42 hours, if I check the memory card. Final Fantasy VIII is your favorite? I said Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VIII, I actually enjoyed. Final Fantasy VIII was different, you know, but it was still good. Final Fantasy IX is probably my favorite out of the, the PS1 era. Don't kill me. I got him. Whew, that was clutch. It was strange because uh, of the whole, like, enemy scaling. You know, you can rush through it. The final boss is an absolute cock tease, though. Boop, boop, boop. Think I'm going to binge my videos tonight? So... I have so many different videos. A lot of people are into the tin, the tin games because they're easy to digest. But I really do enjoy um, talking about every aspect of video game history. And at the time, I didn't break it up into parts. So if you're if you're interested in like the generations of gaming, I would suggest checking the generations episodes. There are three of them for the first, second, and third generation. And then there's a lot of Ready Go Gaming shows talking about the. Uh, the history of games, but just remember, it was up until my Nintendo episode, I was learning how to edit, so those are really rough. Once we moved on past Nintendo, that's when it started getting interesting. Final Fantasy VIII is when I quit consoles, really, and went to PC after that. There's some great PC games that came out in the late 90s, though. Why did you like uh, Final Fantasy VII? I dislike Final Fantasy VII because the consistent momentum breaks between the flashback scenes. You know? It was stupid. Like, having to deal with Cloud's angst was enough for me already. And then you tackle in all of the side quests and stack on the fact that they were dipping their toes into that pre-rendered background, right? And I think I've mentioned this before. A lot of you saw it when I was playing Legend of Goon. But when we jumped from the 16-bit to the 32-bit slash 64-bit, whatever you want to call it, era of gaming... The, one of the big challenges that people ran into with JRPGs was not doing this on a modern era. People wanted 3D. It was the 3D era of gaming. So while this worked for stuff like Wild Arms, at least Wild Arms 1, and for Breath of Fire 3, and a vast majority of other JRPGs in the platforms, Square did want to be more... like... open, right? So what they did is they threw those pre-rendered graphics in there, which are fine, until you realize... You have no depth perception in what you're looking at. So when you're in a big environment, right? When you're in a big environment and you're trying to figure out where to go and then you take one path because like visually it looks like it's higher than the other one but it turns out to be going underneath and you're like, well, fuck! And then you get stuck and then you get thrown into a fight and then you lose your orientation. Uh, I mean, the arrows are there. You can turn the arrows on and say, oh, okay, this is where I need to go but getting there is the problem and that was an issue. Uh, my favorite thing that they did during that time is to simulate distance, they just shrunk your sprite, like, down to a fucking ant size, and sometimes they'll have chests that you need to interact with. But that was it. This the classic Final Fantasy VII. I've never played the remake, and I probably won't, not for a long time, just because I'm playing them all in order. My next Final Fantasy is ten. I wonder if we can go take on Old Man. Now understand, I don't find it to be a bad game, I just think it's incredibly, exceptionally overrated for what it is. Oh, we got good run stats, I like that. By the way, the company that made this was Red Entertainment. You might know them for games like Sakura Wars, or if you're old enough to remember it, Bonk. Bonk is one of their first major games. Fight me, Bokuden! Triple Triad? Fuck yeah, dude. Where's my, uh... 
There's my shurikens, I bought them. No, I haven't. For the is it a aftermarket kind of thing? Spoken and don't kick my ass, buddy. Ugh. Damn, he kicked my ass. I feel like I could beat him. But not yet. We'll come back later once we level up. You're a sucker for Wonder Boy? Uh, Sega? So it's aftermarket. I always love when people go back and they create something for uh, older systems. A lot of people still do it with Commodore 64. But games like Super Russian Roulette for the NES, that's an aftermarket game. Homebrew. Gamuda. We got virtue for days. Let's go over to the East Village and see if we can solve this deer problem. Get bent. So you gotta be careful with Dreamcast games because they really don't like to read the laser. I mean, you can burn Dreamcast games. You can burn Sega CD games, too. I just like Koshiro based on principle. Koshiro is one of the greatest composers, like, ever. Ever. Alright, let's go in here and let's heal and let's do that. Hey, Fort. What's up, Drew? How are you? This is not Pokemon. This is uh, Tengai Makio Zuria, or Far East of Eden, if you're probably not familiar with the franchise. I always encourage people to do the GDEMU route because Dreamcast's infrastructure doesn't last very long. It's not a good technology. Ten dollars? What kind of scam you run in here? Fuck's sake, bro. Do you own a Neo Geo? I do. I do. It's not a traditional Neo Geo, though. It's the arcade Neo Geo. You have my first VA medical appointment on Wednesday? Exciting. Make sure you tell him everything new. That way you can get all the good medicines. Like the, the restless leg syndrome pills and the antidepressant pills and the... The feel better pills and the extra antidepressants for when you run out. <laughs> yeah, so I own it. The SIBO, the Neo Geo that I own, is a console version of the arcade. It's, it's known as the Omega. I can grab it for you if you want. I'll show you. It's very interesting, but it is very overpriced, even for my own tastes. Hello? I have one of these sitting right next to me. Cymbalta? Take THC for meds? I've always wanted to. I've been Unicorn Overlord lately. Pretty cool game, but long as fuck. I've never even heard of that one. Look at this. Ho 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 daddy! Look at that! Cough 98. The Slugfest. Let's crack this open and show you how big the Neo Geo games are. So, I'm able to play arcade ones. Look how big these things are. Big, it's almost as big as my head. It's a gigantic cart. 
<laughs> but yeah, King of Fighters 98. Yeah. One of my more proud purchases. I used to have Fatal, uh, Fatal Fury Real Bout, but I gave it away to Mr. Scoot as a friend. It's still $200 per game. These are the... So, the versions I play are the arcade versions because AES carts... AES, Advanced Entertainment System, not AVS. AVS is, was the name of the uh, Nintendo, the prototype. Not to be confused with the VCS, which is what the Atari was originally known as. So I guess we're going after some Tanooks. Look at these douchebags. Oh no! Oni Danuki, Oni Danuki, Oni Danuki. I'm gonna kick all y'all shit in so hard. Yes, it is. 100%. I have about probably six games. I know that I have Strikers 1945. I have Shock Troopers 1 and 2. Fatal Fury Real Bout 2. I used to have Neo Turf Masters, but I traded it in because it was acting up and I knew somebody who could repair it. Uh, Fatal Fury Real Bout that I gave to Mr. Scoot. I have Metal Slug 1, Metal Slug X, which is the remake of 2, and number 3. Um, what else do I have? Magician Lord, which I fucking hate. That's a shithole game. Uh, Samurai Showdown 5, Amaterasu's Revenge or something. Got a box of MVS cards in my garage. Couple classics in there. Wind Jammers, that's a good one. Cross Swords, bunch of fighting games. Can't remember them all. I'm free, this voice. You must be the Fire Clan. I am the White Deer, Messenger of the Divine. Thank you for breaking the evil seal of Diamondists. Diamondists are strong, incredibly strong. Masakado is stronger yet, but I know you will defeat him. I bestow upon you the scroll of Wakakusa, which contains my divine power. The Wakakusa Jutsu is a technique that can heal minor energy. In yeah! Do I have MP? We're level 6! Nice. It's just gonna stay in there? The Waka Kusa. Alright. Is this more of an ambush? So I just. You know, whatever. I'll take the XP. These people are whack. I don't own Wind Jammers, no. I bought a copy of Wind Jammers for uh, Mr. Scoot. Send it to his home. It's not worth it. Just order Earthworm Gym for the uh, Genesis. Do you think it's wise? I'm not a big fan of Earthworm Gym, but that's not to say that you won't like it. I just, I personally don't. I think it's a fucking waste of time. And it's insanely difficult. That That's from that era. So, 16-bit platformers always just piss me off, right? Because it feels like you're zoomed in, like, this close. Like, this close. And you have to, like navigate a camera that's way too close and it happens with Earthworm Jim, it happens with Donkey Kong Country, it happens with Alien 3 if we want to be even more specific. I just never could get into those. I've played them. I beat Earthworm Jim 1. I was not a big fan of it though. I used cheat codes. Good day! Would you like me to record your bullshit? Yeah, I would. So far, I'm digging this. It's just a traditional JRPG. Very linear. It's a very entry level. And I dig entry level. I guess it does make sense. This game was published by Hudson, and Hudson made a lot of kid-friendly games, so... 
It reminds me of like Shining in the Darkness. If Shining in the Darkness was a open world RPG. Dude, I'm so virtuous. I'm virtuous as fuck. Virtuous as fuck, boy. I don't mind. As long as grinding works, I'm okay with it. As long as I'm talking to y'all, I'm okay with it. In my own time, I hate games where I have to grind. Got any change? What does it say? Could, nothing can beat the... Oh my gosh. You're going to pin that message? Is that what matters here? <laughs> if you're looking at the game list and anything looks strange, uh, like you're seeing nothing but A-rated games or F-rated games, just know it's because I was transferring data. So if you let me know, I can fix it on my end. go try to take off uh, the Boku fight again. It's funny, Boku means like me in Japanese. It makes me wonder if that's what Bokugame, Boku, me, Game. <laughs> right, let's try to fight him. Oh, douchebag, what up? Bokuden. Make a playlist for all your past streams on YouTube so we can binge watch them. I'm pretty sure the lives stay there on YouTube with me being a Twitch partner. Get in, losers. We're seizing the means no! of production. Today. Don't do it. The commies will rise. Hurts. Oh shit, that's a full ass heal. Damn, son. 18 damage? You bitch. I guess I could mess around with that. guy's really hard to hit. Oh, we got him! No, I haven't. And yes, it is. Well, there's a little bit more to that, old man. So, Sweet Home... It's just Sweet Home. The, it's obviously a movie, right? So it started off as a movie. It's a cult classic in Japan. I've never actually watched it because I... I it's silly, right? So Sweet Home gets made into a game on the, <laughs> on the Famicom. And then Shinji Mikami, who's the creator of Resident Evil, was like... I really... I don't know, maybe maybe you were thinking like Sweet Home Alabama? I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah, I think you were thinking of the idiom. You had a Freudian slip. Were you raised by conservative parents? No, I'm just kidding. I was. Uh, let's see. So, Sweet Home Movie gets made into a Famicom thing. And then um, Shinji Mikami, the creator of Resident Evil, wants to make Sweet Home, remake it, 
for the PlayStation, but they can't do the uh, the licensing. They can't get it. So Resident Evil was already made damn near completely as Sweet Home, and then they lost the license. So they just changed everything to Biohazard that we now know as Resident Evil. So it's pretty awesome. Put the film out in nice remastered colors. It is a weird movie. It's Japanese horror. Japanese horror is strange just on principle. I like Japanese horror, so for anybody who doesn't know the difference between Japanese horror and American horror, American horror, we really like slashy, you know, s stab people in the throat, gore, 18-year-old titties, stupid shit like that. In Japan, it's all about the monster that's in your mind, and that's what I like. I like thinking, right? I think that the monster in your mind is probably 18,000 more times scarier than, you know, Jason from Friday the 13th or any slasher film through the years. Bokuren Slasher! Yeah. I may have taken some creative license, don't take what I say for, for thoughts, but I, I remember that a significant amount of the game was created with the intention of it being Sweet Home Remade. Uh, Rock Sloyd Productions made me want to get Earthworm Jim. He goes on and on about how much he loves it. That is, and that's the thing, that's totally up to you, because at the end of the day, what, what I like is very subjective to what y'all like. I love the shit out of Myst. I'm a huge fan of Myst. Not a lot of people are, and I don't blame them. Myst is not for everybody. Myst is literally a walking, what the fuck did that Switch do simulator. And if you're playing the older versions, it's essentially a PowerPoint. It's essentially a PowerPoint. So you have to think about it like that. You know, what some people like, other people's won't. I personally don't like Earthworm Jim, but if Rock, Solo uh, Rock Solid Productions has a strong memory and he loves the game, bully for them. You know? Good for them. Riven is getting a sequel? What do you mean Riven's getting a sequel? It already has a sequel. Miss 3 Exile. <laughs> is it an in-universe sequel? Dude, I swear to God, you know that that would become an override, right? Because we've completed the Mist franchise? Motherfuckers. Cyan Worlds, what are you doing? How can you make Riven 2? It just doesn't make sense. We've already finished literally everything. I'm... Riven sequel? Go to Wikipedia. We can always trust Wikipedia. No, it's a remake. It's a remake. It's not a... So basically, it's real mist. It's real mist, but it's Riven. It's not a sequel. It doesn't make any sense to... to make a sequel to Riven. We destroyed Riven and Riven. There is no sequel to Riven. <laughs> we we broke the whole fucking place in half. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> That's not a thing. Legacy of Kane is getting a remake? Good. I like it. Legacy of Kane, I liked. My problem with Legacy of Kane is that it was so dark. It's a very dark game. You can stream it in the Oculus? I could. Well, a lot of people forget that you couldn't manually walk in Mist until uh, Real Mist Masterpiece Edition was created. And even in the main line of games up until Uru, Uru being the failed MMORPG that they tried to do. Legend of Legacy of Kane is a goddamn sequel. It does. <laughs> Legacy of Kane 2, Soul Reaver. No, I'm just kidding. I don't I don't know anything about the uh They need more. I mean, wasn't Defiance the last game and it was just kinda meh. Kia, have you played uh the original one? Blood Omen Legacy of Kane for the PlayStation 1? Didn't OG Razriel die of uh he passed away from cancer, didn't he? Did you ever play Shivers, the Sierra horror game? I haven't, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't know about it until I talked to Ken Williams. By the way, good news, good news. I have an interview with Mr. Al Lowe coming up. I don't know what day we're gonna do it, but he said yes, I have it in email, he wants to know what day. 
So we're gonna have another Legends episode coming out. I'm gonna be talking to Mr. Aulo, who I already know personally, so it'll be an easy conversation. I did reach out to a few other people, though. I reached out to uh, Tim Fallen on his LinkedIn account. Um, I don't know if he checks it. I did message Baggy Cat's PR team to see if I can talk to him. Uh, Grant Kirkcope, I had, I had messaged his PR firm as well. Roberta Williams, I messaged Mr. Ken, and I said, um... Uh, asked if she would be open to it. And I messaged uh, Phil... Phil, whatever his name is. He's the, the main actor from Phantasmagoria 2. He plays Curtis. And he runs his own YouTube channel, too, Conversations with Curtis, where he plays the games with the original actors. See, the problem is, getting a hold of a lot of the people who don't have a social media presence, uh, you have to go through media PR firms, and I'm pretty sure they never forward my emails, because there's no money involved in it, right? Oh, Scott Miller. I reached out to Scott Miller as well, to, uh... To, of Apogee fame to see if he would want to talk. That reminded me when you said Duke Nukem Forever. What's your question, Marauder? Also, what's your question, old man Sim? I'm sorry I missed both of those. Did you get a haircut? No, no. My hair is just tied back. No haircut here. It's still there. I'm not cutting my hair for another three years. I'm doing it in, in solidarity with all my friends I lost during the military. Oh, the sweet home question. I had four friends die in the military, so therefore, four years, I'm not cutting my hair. Who's this guy? Boku, what are you doing here? Are you stupid? I just... Oh, it's him. See, the problem is, I already, I've already talked to the guy, so... Stupid. Sweet Home the Show? I mean, Sweet Home is probably a remake of, the, of that. I could never really get in a... Oh, that's me. It's a me! You gotta talk to Eggman? No, I haven't. Who is Ponpokorin? Okay, so these are just like weird, deceptive tanukis. It's more than that, Marauder. Did you know that that's what... So, Sweet Home the Movie was made in a Sweet Home the Game, which was transitioned into Resident Evil the Game. Did you know that? I do have an entire Ready Go Gaming show about the history of uh, the survival horror genre, if anybody's interested. It can be found inside of my uh, my YouTube channel. Home Sweet Homeception, indeed. Whew. I always encourage people to like use the search bar and type in their favorite genres, because you never know if I've actually released a, an episode on it. The problem is they're long and they're boring. It's not for everybody, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with uh, accepting the fact that it isn't for everybody. But I don't make movies for robots. I don't make episodes for robots. I make it for people, right? Oh, can I also say that Jesper Kidd is one of the greatest composers ever? Have y'all ever heard Jesper's Kidd's music? That guy's a fucking badass. Old man, I know you'll you'll you will love this, right? Have you ever heard Jesper Kidd's music? Do you know who Jesper Kidd is? You probably recognize the name. I know he recognizes music because he's done most of the music in Borderlands and Assassin's Creed. But his Genesis era? Holy fuck. Let me show you. This is for everybody. Yeah, Jesper Kidd. He's Danish. He did uh, The Adventures of Batman and Robin, the Genesis game. Listen to some of the songs. Just listen to this. 
Bear in mind, this would have been on the Genesis. This isn't a good song. Let me find one. That is a hard bass to accomplish on the Genesis. He did. He got a BAFTA award for uh, Hitman Contracts. God damn. See Two Faces theme. This is like the Danish Yuzo Kashiro, as far as I'm concerned. Very different. Uh, I guess not. I mean, it's nothing compared to the fucking. <laughs> What's the name that the guy did? Roller Mobster? Carpenter Brute? Oh, I do. I actually do. So I can't I can't play the song that's copyrighted. You know what? I don't get any money from my YouTube streams. Let's fucking go. This part. Remember this sound. Cuz if we go to Plock on the Super Nintendo, <laughs> if we go to the Plock if we listen to this song, I'm pretty sure Carpenter Brute was inspired by it. This game sucks. It's Tim Fallen doing his, his magic. Wait for the drop on this. Listen to this. Just listen. Super Nintendo! <laughs> Dude, right? <laughs> and then, uh, let's see, what's another good one? Yuzo Kashiro Dub Slash? I guess Poets 1 is a good one too. It's I'm not a big fan of Streets of Rage 3, but another Genesis. Ah, uh, was it diving? This, this is by Dean Evans. This is my study music. This is my grounding music. This is another absolute bullshit game with another fucking fantastic soundtrack. Because he starts doing melodic interweaves right in the middle. It's right here at 140. Here we go, right here. I don't think y'all understand how difficult this is. There was no just play the piano and load the samples. This was hand programmed. I want to see this on an oscilloscope. Okay, so this is <laughs> this is so stupid. So this is the NES. This shows you the oscilloscope of the insanity that Tim Fallon did on the NES for the game Solstice, another game that is straight butthole, right? 
butthole. It's just nothing but butthole. But watch this. NES Nintendo Entertainment System He managed He managed to turn a sine wave into a hi-hat by noise gating the tops you want to see if there's a plaque? <laughs> we'll see if it's there. Oh, it is. Oh, it's going to be dirty. Okay, so we got three channels because this would have been SNES. So we've got our square, our squ sign, and another sign. Oh, no, it's six channels. No, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I didn't realize he did that. Okay, so there's a few things going on. If we, it's hard to see, but it's really cool. If I turn down the speed, we might be able to see what's going on here. Okay, so you see at the very top where my mouse cursor is, this is a square, it's a square wave, right? But the good thing about Tim Fallen is that he was able to manipulate by changing the decay and the attack and all of these things that you use for, for music production. He's able to manipulate it to add a noise gate right there for that blank line. And that is the sound of the psh, of the symbol. So what Tim Fallen is doing is just God's work. And he, he has a normal sine wave here for all of the other stuff. Oh, he's expanding it. He's changing the frequency. Look at the frequency. It widened and narrowed. My bad. Narrow. Wide. Narrow. Wide. And he converts it. Just... Ah! Jesus Christ. What's another shitty? Yeah, I the fuck, man. Uh, what's another good one? Poets 1. I don't Marauder, you ever play Streets of Rage 3? This song's badass too. Another Yuzo Kashiro. He plays this song live and people lose their minds. Here it goes. Here's the drop. It's insane to me. So the thing for me, right? Is that Streets of Rage 3 might not be the best game. It's not even really the best soundtrack, but for me, it's the pinnacle of what Kashiro could do on the Genesis, right? And for those of you who don't know, Kashiro's really good at uh at like manual composition. And if you if you look at uh the video I'm gonna release tomorrow, you'll see some of his more melodic things, his symphonic sounds, which are very different. 
go you mean go straight is that the one it's like it's like the first song you hear I don't think we need the end let me know the name music people weren't people pay attention to I barely attention to who I am new video tomorrow yeah so I'm you can tell that I'm working on a very labor-intensive video when I'm not releasing a video every day. I'm not lazy at all. I just... <laughs> it's a lot of work. This is, uh... This is Far East of Eden. So I only get 5 TP? I start off with 9 TP. How do I get my other TP back? Butthole. Played something artistically similar? I couldn't tell you. You're not lazy, you're just old. Oh, appreciate it. I hope I hope old age hits you like a fucking rhinoceros in heat. Talking shit to me about being old. <laughs> I'm not old. I'm 31. Hey, by the way, I got my birthday coming up. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do anything special. It might just be another night. Night of streaming. But April 4th is my birthday. Bum, 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 bum. Ford, I'm half bald and I'm 32 year old. Fuck you! No. I've been blessed with really good jeans. I'm not even. I don't even think that my hair is the coolest thing. You can ask, uh. Ask Marauder, I have like tremendously feminine eyelashes and I don't know why. And all of my kids, all of my kids have great eyelashes too. I have Bonita eyelashes. How do I check this? Toad oil! That's expensive. Oh. Okay, you're fake. Go get it. I'm gonna kick the shit out of all of you. Wait a minute. So that that attack just randomly happens? Oh, I'm so down. This game's awesome. You got a British fat ass? Yeah, I have like ridiculous eyelashes. What do your pants have to do with this fort? I don't know. Ooh, 50 Rio! What is up with this cave and why is... Oh, it's my master. Uh, when are you gonna enter your brightly dyed hair streamer here? I mean... I, I have really dark brown hair, almost black hair. I don't know if it's possible to dye my hair without going through some chemical process. I don't know if I want to do that. I've never done it. Wait, bitch, stole my shit! Steven, fuck! Start with red or purple. I don't know, I just, I don't want to end up looking like... <laughs> what's the name of the guy from, uh... Oh, what's the name? They sing the song, Every morning there's a halo hanging from the... Mark McGrath, I don't want to look like Mark McGrath, okay? have shitty frosted tips and damn boy you thick you're not going anywhere he's like an obese one piece luffy guy you all right bud you, you're doing the adhd jaw stretch take the shit out of you is what i'm gonna do i'm not gonna frost the tips I spent most of the 90s with a bowl cut. I'm not frosting my tips. Oh, you bitch! Look, it's, I didn't have any control over it. 
That was what my mom wanted to do. Mago? Fuck you, dude! Ooh. I don't know if we're gonna be able to beat this guy. Oh, yep, I'm dead. Alright, so we might have to grind to beat this guy. By the way, for anybody who doesn't know what this uh, this is on, this is TurboGrafx-16 CD. Well, the PC Engine CD, because it wasn't released anywhere else. Also, by the way, thank you for your service. It was just a job. Marauder's still in. It'll make her, like, really horny if you tell her thank her for her service, because she's all like, fuck yeah, America and shit. <laughs> I got out. <laughs> I got out out. But I appreciate your support. I know it matters. Oh, don't. I, I can hear the, the panties dropping from across the world. Oh, thank me for my service. I love my job, not my corporation. What do you think of the new Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force? What was the Genesis precursor? The Sega Master System, you were right. Uh, the Mark III. Cory, it's Cory again. What? Oh yeah, yeah, Chief Corey. I I mean I'm I'm gonna give him his time because he's only been in for a few days. But I mean, I have a feeling he's just gonna word vomit um, a bunch of policies from Alvin. For anybody who doesn't know, the Chief Master of the Air Force before um, the one we have right now was very much a yes woman who took selfies with everybody to the point where she was wasting a shit ton of taxpayers' money to fly around just to take selfies with people. She's a bitch, and I fucking hate her. And then she stalked me on LinkedIn because she thought she could ruin my like career because she thought I was Air Force. Nope! <laughs> Learned that the hard way. All right, so I don't think we're strong enough to take him on. That's fine. We did the Boku, Boku fight. We can clear that off. We need to go north. Just grind, grind, grind. No, I'm just kidding. No, you, you make sure you say vets plural. Yeah, that that chief master of the air force. She uh, there was a running joke because her last name was Bass. Everybody was like, like the fish or the guitar, like most stupid lower level E3s would say, right? And then she's like, oh, I'm gonna nip this in the bud. So she like publicly shamed this kid, made him apologize through a fucking Zoom meeting call to her, and then she straight up lambasted some PJ because I don't know if you remember that Marauder. The PJ's estranged wife was like, I left him because he was always TDY, and... Oh shit, dude, I'm getting my butthole kicked in. Uh, he's like, she's he's always TDY, and he's never home, and she, like, all but called him a deadbeat dad. Oh, level 7. Nice. Let's go in for the save, at least. I went through a phase where I spiked my hair every day in the 90s. It's too lazy for that shit now in my 30s. I, uh, I have really long hair. It's probably the longest hair I've ever had in my life. And I don't know how long it's going to get in four years. Maybe I'll be one of those, like... I'll be like Smokey from The Big Lebowski. Just have hair down to my ass. Market Zero! It's a league game, Smokey. You're in for a world of pain if you <laughs> Come on, Walter man. It's a league game, Smokey. Uh do 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 Might be able to do it now that I'm level seven. Hello, Kamai Tachi, Tachi Tachi, whatever you're called. 
Kama Itachi. I don't know what that means in Japanese. Why am I only doing XYZ damage? Okay. What did what am I wearing? I got all the right stuff. My attack's still 15, it's just the enemies are getting stronger. Weasel Demon. Smokey, this is Nom. There are rules. <laughs> I think it's about eight years since I cut mine, but it gets super curly and wavy, so you can tell it goes down my butt unless it's wet. Yeah, so when I wet my hair, my hair poofs out like a fucking, you know, lounge singer, I guess is the best way to say it. I mean, I could take my hair down. I look like little Nikki. Uh, Amanda says I look like Lord Farquaad when I shave, so like I try to avoid shaving when I can, but I needed to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Muy bonita. Yeah. <laughs> Got that long, long hair. The Fabio hair. And luscious eyelashes to make Marauder jealous. She's gonna send me a bomb in the mail. It's gonna be a glitter bomb. Hear that, NSA? It's a glitter bomb. Don't get crazy. Don't get crazy. I know. I don't know. I, I'm so used to, I had a buzz cut for like the better part of my life, you know? And it's like, wash your damn hair. I have to wash it every, uh, every few days. Every few days I try to it every single day because if I did I'd have really really dry hair especially with the conditioner I use for dandruff you get all that all that JP8 in your hair over the years it fucks with your scalp yeah I wash mine usually like every three to four too <laughs> is it like overly hard water got that hard water now you know what you know what you want to know why the water's bad in, in New Mexico because it's just fucking hatch chili can water juice that's all that they put through their pipes anyway. That's why you're all so indoctrinated. You wash yours every century? Brother, you're in for a treat. Got some dreads. Let's go see if we can take this guy on. Uh, Nevada had pretty hard water. I had to install a, a water softener. I thought this was Santa Claus at first, to be honest with you. He was an old Santa Claus. Nope, just big titty bear. He's having ticks. I don't know if I want to beat him up. That was a waste. My water's pretty good up in the panhandle. Like, I'm right outside of Pensacola, and my water's pretty good. But I'm trying to get on well water, so I don't have to pay the government anymore. It's still wild to me that former chief got away with that shit. Got away with what? Damn. She also, you remember she, well, you wouldn't remember. Her husband popped off shots in base housing. Uh, <laughs> has warning shots. True story. Somebody broke on a base and his, his decisive action was to, uh, just shoot at the guy. Sh fire off warning shots. Oh, fun fact. What's up? When I re-enlisted? Yeah. By the way, that picture... It's a good picture of you. You goofed? What'd you do? Did you do, uh, like a four-year instead of a six-year? Or did you do indefinite? What did you do? To raise the wrong hand. You raised the wrong hand, didn't you? 
All right, I'm not going to dox Marauder. I'm going to go put this over here real quick. Music. You're always in my recent searches. I don't know why. Probably because I don't search people. I don't see the problem. What's the problem? You, you gave a left-handed salute? I mean... It's just a hand signal. Did you get the... Oh! You know? <laughs> Crew chiefs are mean to each other. You probably got the... <laughs> what? I killed him. Why is he still there? No. Okay, I'll forgive you because I'm a virtuous person. Thanks for the free XP, I guess. <laughs> okay. This is very linear. Very, very, very linear. Seems the cult of Diamond is gathering believers by telling them that if they join, they can become immortal. So they're Al Qaeda. Gotcha. Chief Kumagiri has been expecting you, Ziri Sama. He looks forward to teaching you one of the techniques he designed. Am I going to have to whack him in the face for it? Because I don't want to. Look at this little Kim Jong il looking goof. Gambling, Den. It's a simple game. Just bet whether some of two dice will be even or odd. Gambling? My, if it isn't Zuriya san, should you really be here? I guess it's fight every once in a while. Dice Lady is a real babe. When I play, I'm not exactly looking at the dice if you catch my drift. Oh, <laughs> she looked thick. Let me, I want to see if she's a keeper. Okay, yeah, because her titty's hanging out, of course. Fuck! I'm 100% gonna get, like, free money here. Oh shit! I don't think this is rigged. I think it's it's it works. Well, good to know that we can uh <sighs> we can get some easy money there if we really need to. What's up, kid? Man. Koemasama was kicked out of Mito Castle by Goemon, one of the heads of the cult of Daimon. He's a violent man who loves torturing people. Did he cut your eye out? The Daimonists are using Mito Town. Mito Town is their base, just north from here, beyond the lake. Everyone there has been acting weird ever since. Oh, Nar! The 
thieving is cool. If you can steal the money successfully, you get to keep it for yourself. Think of it as a game and have fun. But don't forget your quest to defeat Masakado. Is it going to be easy like the other one? Oh, Jesus. Oh, I got captured. Okay, this is stupid easy too, but is it just one or is it... Oh, is there multiple exits? It might be. Is this another exit? Ah! No? Okay. Dude, I'm the worst thieving in the world. She got some titty, not gonna lie. What, that, that lady? I guess. I've seen better. Especially from gambling people. Alright, this is the sack store. Let's see what's in the sack store. What do you got? White Toto, White Snake Stone, White Crane Plume. Again, these are things that I don't know because the manual is, uh is not very easy to read because it's in Japanese. So we do have a walkthrough pulled up. The we're literally only looking at it for the uh for the items and if you don't believe me we'll look at it together. So it says white toad oil. White toad oil is our bigger heel. And then we got a white snake sp stone. What does the snake stone do? Uh snake sphere. Lucifeller, Lucifeller, okay. Uh, Toad Oil, White Snake Stone, oh, this heals MP, and then the White Crane Flume lets us warp anywhere. But I don't see the point of that because we've got Komaguro now, or whatever the name of the frog is, so I don't know what the point of this is. Any off chance you forget to get the frog, or? I don't know. I'm limited in what I can carry, so I'll take, a, I'll take one White Toad Oil. And then I'll take one white snake stone. But other than that, you're ripping me off. I love the Hamlets. All right. What we got? Talk to me. You're probably too young to remember, but Chief Kamigiri was once a pupil of the Toad Hermit, just like you. Apparently, when you were very young, he took one look at you and concluded that you'd be a fire hero. Oh, good. This is the chief. Burly. Oh, <laughs> あんたは Okay. Sir. <laughs> okay. Why would Resident Evil 9 be open world? I mean, it's a different direction for him. I mean, it was a different direction to go first person with Resident Evil 7, so, you know, more power to him, but they gotta remember that they, they've got an audience that they've had for a long time, that being ambitious can be a shot in the foot. Ow! Ow! Nobu Soba. I mean, it's Capcom. Capcom is allowed to be ambitious. You know what I mean? Let's 
These fucking ferrets, man. These evil ass ferrets I'm going up against. Like weasels. I do like the moral that we have here, like, if we forgive people, we get more XP, etc. But if we're not kind and virtuous, then we don't get that XP, and I find that very interesting. I mean, they're creative. Wish they'd be ambitious with Mega Man. So, Mega Man is the exception. Mega Man has been fan service since Mega Man 11. True story. Uh, if you want to talk about fan service in in, com in competition, Street Fighter. Other than that, between Resident Evil, Street Fighter, and Mega Man, they've all but kind of forgotten about their legacy franchises, which is a shame. So. They really didn't have that much. Capcom was big in the arcade, and, you know, they made one Zelda game, so... I think Minute was a Minish Cap or made Phantom Hourglass. One of the two was a uh, Capcom that did that. What we got here? All right, let's check our map of Subasa, Sukuba, Subasa, Sukuba. Let's see where we're going. All right, so there's a big place up here. Let's go check it out. This is where the weird people are, right? Two of them. I think this is going to be a fun and quick JRPG. I'm actually quite interested to see how long this goes. All you need to know about Mega Man is that they found the right flavor of Kool-Aid that worked and they did it 11 times. And then whenever the Kool-Aid got boring, they jumped it over to the SNES for the X franchise. And when that got boring, they decided to throw spin-offs. If you want to know anything about the Mega Man franchise, go to my YouTube. Because Season 2, Episode 1 of the Ready Go Gaming Show is Mega Man. And I talked about every single game. All 150 of them. True story. What's up, Spicy Nugget? Monster Hunter is my Capcom passion. That's the other franchise. I knew that there was, like, one or two more. Didn't Dragon's Dogma... Dragon Dogma is them too, right? Dragon Dogma... Dogma... Dragon's Dogma 2. Yeah, it's it's about an hour, I think. and it, We cover every single game to include the fighting, the main lines, everything. I never like I don't like Mega Man either because it's Call of Duty by Capcom over and over again. Same thing, rehashed out. I mean once they got once they got to the Super Nintendo, they damn near shit on it. X3 onwards was trash. Um Basically Mega Man is a robot that was created by a guy named Dr. Light. And there's an another guy named Dr. Wiley. Who went to robot college I shit you not that is actual lore and they became rivals and now dr. Wiley is obsessed with world domination and mr. light or dr. light is uh was it X maybe it was x5 where shit went downhill that that's literally it, it he's just a robot and he's got a robot sister named roll dr. Wiley Yes, X is darker. There's a lot more death. Um, then you got the X-Men Legends games, like The Misadventures of Tron Bond, which goes for $500 on eBay. And I'll probably never own it. I think I think Nick said that he's got a copy of uh, Misadventures of Tron Bond. If I can fix it, I can keep it. I think it was Nick that said that. think. Rock Roll Base and Trouble, also known as uh, Gospel and Forte in Japan. Mega Man Legends was a really cool idea. I like the whole 3D world. 
That was that was dope. And you could like skate around and shit. It was fun. I rented it at least five times, but the problem is, is I rented it, and I didn't have a memory card as a kid. And if I remember right, Mega Man Legends on the Nintendo 64, Mega Man 64, uh, kept the the save like installed. So there was this one other kid that kept renting it, and he would progress me slightly forward on the story, and then I'd progress him slightly forward, and then he would do it. It was it was kind of cool. Are y'all gonna be assholes to me? I'm glad Come On and Stooges are gone. I'm so sick of Kaku's dreadful wordplays. Oh no, we got word wordplay? The Code of Diamond is fantastic. It heals all sickness, restores your youth, and frees you from all the world's ills. Okay, he's indoctrinated. The head priest sealed the way to the castle protected from bad guys. How ingenious. Memory cards weren't cheap back in the day. the fuck? Okay. Not very nice. I wonder if they're not gonna let me, like, stay at any of their stuff. General store. I'll pay premium prices if you got human souls for me. See, come on, who's good money for their souls, which grudge against the world. Okay, so they're all donkey shit. Is the save guy indoctrinated? There is no save guy. <laughs> oh, no. Huh, you wanna stay? Sure, I have a room just for you. It's 50 million real? This town's full of bullshit, man. I don't want anything to do with it. Okay, so I'm assuming that's where we need to go. The people of this town are so kind, it's because the cult of diamond has washed away the evil in their hearts. Debatable! Those who join the cult of diamond are being convinced by Gomez on Maya's castle is John. Oh, who won't join? <laughs> Can you believe that the self-proclaimed fire hero actually thinks he could defeat the cult of Daimon? Goman Samo will put an end to him in no time. Might as well be Beverly Hills. I've stayed in Beverly Hills before. It's not that exciting. It's a stupid town of rich white people. What? You're not a diamondist? Leave it once. You're stinking up the place. Hmph. That's my unwashed ass. Nothing to do with if I'm in here. I'm running across the country nonstop. What's over here? It's a two-part village? It's a huge village. So don't stare at me. Alright, these guys are scared. Komasama should beat the crap out of this fool's spaghetti that called a diamond. The crap? Well, haha, -ha, thanks to Cold of Diamond, I can spend my days having fun without a single care. No need to work or anything. Did the Cold of Diamond give me my disability through the VA? If so, man, hell yeah, Colt. I go to church every day to pray as a result, I am no longer bald. I think that's how it works, brother. That Kuman fool has been driven out of the castle by Goman Sama, but, he, but he's off crying in some shack. No, he fought me in a cave. True story. And he almost killed me. Failure clan? Oh my gosh. Alright, well, I don't think we're going to be strong enough to take him on. Either that or we're going to have to be damn near fully healed to get there. Find me on a bridge, asshole. It's not much. Like, not worth it.
at all. Is there no weapon store here? I feel like there should be a weapon store. Kind of screwing me. Bum, 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 bum. Alright, let's go into the castle, see what we're going to continue with when we get in there. Get a full fresh heal. Mal I've never been to Malibu. I've been to Encino, though. I was a child actor, so I lived in Las, Vegas, or Los Angeles for like three months. I think I still keep a headshot underneath my keyboard just to make fun of myself. Show y'all how handsome I used to be when I was younger. Where'd it go? I know I had it. Nope, nope. This is me with the bowl cut. There you go. This is proof of the bowl cut for anybody who doesn't believe me. Look at that. Yeah, buddy. Look at that fucking kid in the 90s. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. That'll, that'll. <laughs> Big old ears. Bowl for days. That kid fucks. He does. That's why he's got five kids now. I don't, I don't know. It's... Part of me is glad that I didn't get exposed to that side of Hollywood. I, I couldn't land anything because that year they were focusing more on female leads for kids stuff. That was uh, your, your time where Wizards of Waverly Place and, you know, all of these female-driven Disney programs were in. And if you're a kid, Disney was the way to get in, um, to get in the industry. But for me, it was just there's no chance. There were a few things I auditioned for. Most of them were T TLC-like movies. I think there was one about a bounty hunter, one about basketball that I tried out for. Uh, we auditioned to be in the <clears throat> Hell's Kitchen audience, which was stupid. Um... Blue October's Hate Me. I think that's the name of the game. Or name of the song. Hate me today, hate me tomorrow. Something like that. Um, Nickelodeon Studios was very, wasn't very popular at the time. I think they're based out of Florida. I was in Los Angeles. Uh, I went to Universal a few times to audition for some stuff, but it was, they never wanted me to talk. It was just stand there and they're like, okay, you don't fit our vision, you can leave. Okay, cool. Sweet. I will say my mom took advantage of me, I think, in some ways. She focused more on shopping than she did getting me auditions, which sucks, but, you know, what are you going to do? It was years ago. I don't hold a grudge. But I am curious to see, you know, what would have happened. So that's the the die symbol. Glory to Goma Sama, long live the cold of Daimon. No, fuck them. That's Satan! What's he doing here? Only the faithful shall be saved. Let the head priest baptize you. And what? That's literally Satan. No. Anio. Oh, it's the same dude. He just became a priest. <laughs> what? That dude, I just kicked your ass, man. What do you want? Stupid. Probably, yeah. 
I went to the premiere of uh, She's the Man, which was some like Amanda Bynes soccer movie. I remember that. I'm thinking, oh, this is so cool. Getting two attacks, that's what sucks. Asshole. Fifty? Douchebag. Oh, that's so fucked. I didn't realize that he would get a. So silly. Alright, he's, he's much stronger than us. That's fine. So, this is going to be a grind-heavy game. I'm not against that at all. I don't mind it one bit. Okay, I see another Dymo stone over there. Makes me curious what the max level for this is to beat it. I'm getting wiped out by weasels. I wish I had some offensive magic. That'd be cool. But they're getting they're getting turns first. It's very silly. Pumpokurin. I don't know. Let's look it up. Pumpokurin. It might be like a ha 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 kind of thing. Pumpokurin. Oh, thanks, Kia. Thanks for swinging by, and I appreciate it for uh, you sticking around for a while. Okay. I don't know. Bobokorin. I think it's a really strange mistranslation. Pompo cutting. It says bumper cutting, but I don't think that's what that means. B 
Bumper cutting! Oh no! It starts with bumper cutting. Meaty thighs. It doesn't even matter how hard you try. Popo cutting. Popo cutting. Just looks like it's nonsensical stuff. Thank you so much for that bit, my favorite spoon. How are you? What you up to? Can you use the Kodagama here? Damn! Google too close to get an answer was a couple songs in Sorrow. Well, you're thinking of, uh... Oh, is that one? Damn! Look how many areas we've got. We got one, two, three, four, five, so six. This game's well, seven, I guess, technically. Seven areas? This game's gonna go by pretty quickly, I think. Be somewhat reasonable. Bro, you're whack. I don't think that my weapons are really... I don't like the, the combat system in this. There's something strange going on because I'm level 7 and I'm only still doing 3 damage to them. And I'm fully equipped with everything I should be equipped with, so I don't understand what's going on. Pumpkin bust! Nah, that doesn't make any sense. I think it's just a, uh, you know how Moogle say Kupo at the end of what they're saying? I think they're trying to sound like what, uh, what sounds Tanuki's make. Something like that. I think it's some nonsensical term. If that makes sense. So the slash ability is a random ability that fires off. And it's very silly that I can't control it, but it is what it is. I'm not upset with this game. You can tell this this is a an RPG made for kids. I'm okay with that. I'm not going to complain about that at all because this is very approachable. Right, we already got everything. I could have swore I bought a shuriken, but I don't know where it went. It's very cozy. I, I I like it. Is it groundbreaking? Not particularly, but this is the first RPG this company ever pumped out, so I'm interested. And apparently it's sold enough in Japan to create like seven more sequels. I want better shoes! I think we're kind of limited here, because I don't think there's another town. Kogama... Take me here. <laughs> it's very competent. That's what I'm saying. I'm impressed. It's got that uh, shining in the darkness artistic aesthetic, which I'm all about. That's a lot of virtue. 22 a pop for a fight like that? I'm 
genuinely okay with that. You're never left in this in an area where grinding. Bocce heavy. Is that supposed to be Habu? I mean, it's obviously a cobra. It's got a hood. Bocce heavy. Are these stronger? They are doing five damage to me, so they're pretty gnarly. Wakagusa! And there's no status effects, I don't think, which is nice. I don't have to worry about that. It's literally just damage. Good job, Kugama. Eh, slightly less virtue than the Nobus. Nobu Zuma and a Bachi Hebi. What does this combination look like? I'm just slow and I take a lot of damage from these guys because they get turns first. And that's a full heal too. That's not that's not bad. That's decent. Eh, it's still better to have a mob of two. I I would like to take on a mob of three Nobus if I could. That would be perfect. Ugh. It's got a little bit of a good soundtrack as well. I want to say this was on the Super Graphics, which is the second game. Y'all remember uh, the Weird Strange Robot Power Rangers game that we played? Makio Genjinsetsu or something? It was the... It's some, some weird, you know, thing. I don't know. Take care, old man Sim. Thank you so much for that raid tonight. And it's always a pleasure to see you. I, I love, love, love talking to you about video game history. So thank you so much for coming over and gracing, gracing us with your presence and entertaining, you know, humoring my insanity. So plus, got you on my TV to watch till I pass out. Remind me to scream in 30 minutes so I can become your sleep paralysis demon. <laughs> Wake up! Take care, man. Thanks so much. I appreciate you. Good night, good man. Fortifier, my. Oh, what's up? Good morning, Rob. How are you? Sexy Dragon Warrior. I beat it. Your error is that a Zelda Two reference? You sly fiend. What are you doing? That's a that's a nice one right there. We're playing a Tengai Maikyo, which is a uh, Japanese exclusive JRPG known as Far East of Eden. That's the proper name for it. At least the franchise that was spawned from it. It's pretty good. It's just your traditional run-of-the-mill, uh... Alright, 681. Alright, we got a little bit more to go. We're gonna try it. Once we get to level 8, we'll kind of go back and try to deal with those guys again. The priest.
Get wrecked. All right, only 10 more of those fights and we'll be good to go. Super Back to the Future is amazing. I don't I don't think I've ever played that one. I didn't even know it existed. Oh, wait. Is that the one that has all three episodes? All three movies? I don't remember. It's been a long time. It's only part two. Two botch heavies. I like that there's no crypticness, that it's rather straightforward. And for eighty nine, not bad. I don't know if this was 89. Well, PC Engine was released earlier than the Graphic 16 CD. I might be wrong on the year. Kick that ass! Cool. Keep doing it, doing it, and doing it again. It's the name of the game. It's what we do. Damn, it's almost one in the morning. This game's got me. Distracted. That's not something we see very often. Time usually doesn't pass for me. To the point where I haven't even really needed to take a break outside of whenever uh, <laughs> Flynn dumped his bowels in the in his kennel. I love games like this. I I, I really don't mind grinding. It can be fun as long as we're having conversations. It can be fun. And I'm curious, because... So there's three... Three of these games... They release this almost every single year. And the next one is Mon Manjisama or something. Then we've got Kabuki Den... Something else. Which focuses on a different character. I don't know. And at some point we got a fighting game, which will be easy to play, because it's just a fighting game. But it's an SNK fighting game. It's a Neo Geo game, so it'll probably be hard as fuck. I don't know. Do 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 do. Nobusuma. Nobusuma. There we go. All right, let's go see if we can take out old boy. See if we do any more any more damage to these guys. We were doing three before. 
It's still three. So this is what I'm talking about. It's kind of there's some weird stuff. I don't know how the damage rules are going in this game, and it's confusing to me. Is it based on? It seems like I'm taking less damage but not doing more offensively, and that's what's confusing me. But I'm okay with it. Like I said, this game has not gotten on my nerves yet. I think it's there's not really any backtracking. It's very forward momentum based, and I'm okay with that. I like that. We don't have long dungeons either. It's kind of straightforward. Walk into a town, beat the shit out of somebody, move on. Like, that's the dream RPG right there. I'm sure we'll have an, an actual dungeon. I, and I hope we do, because it's only fitting for, like, a traditional JRPG to do that. Bing, bing, bing. I'm hoping that when we kill the head priest that uh, we'll be able to shop and maybe get better weapons. <sighs> Is it me or these people got very long ears? No, they're wearing backpacks. Okay. Look like Dobby the Elf. No need to pay. It's free. If I had to pay for my saving, I'd lose my mind. 100% be using safe states. Ah! All right, let's go see about taking on uh, Big Dick Magoo up there. For the second time, like, how did I kick his ass and then immediately he becomes a priest? Doesn't really make much sense to me. All right, we're gonna flee from this fight. Usually I don't. Ah! Oh! So that's how that works. At least it gives you more of an idea. I'm gonna beat the shit out of y'all. So, in some weird way, I appreciate that they're saying that they're chasing after us. Because it makes so much more sense than, like, you know, Final Fantasy and Legend of Dragoon, where they turn around and they're just running in place. And then... <laughs> you know what I mean? And the other people are just standing still, and they're like, Oh, we couldn't escape, so we could turn around. It's the small things. It's the little things. I don't think I'm gonna use the the save guy anymore. I can just use save states. It's the same as uh, still check. Boop. Yep. All right, we're fine. Zeria Soma. Damn! Okay. So obviously escaping from a mob of one is going to be eons easier than escaping from a mob of two. I respect that. I wonder what happens if I say yes. I wonder if I lose virtue. Suikoden 2? Got to play Suikoden first. Panpo Korin. Panpo Korin. Alright. Pon po -korin. So I did spell it right.
Okay, so the song, Adore Pompo Karin, means dance the Pompo Colon. Okay, so now we gotta look and see what Pompo Colon is. Pompo Colin. Oh, it's just a silly, it's just a silly thing. Well, I don't want to, I want to be honest with him. I am not a virtuous follower of your bullshit. Boom. Looking like a tailspin victim. <clears throat> oh shit, I got a lot of money from him. He's 36. Nice. Thank God, that would have hurt. What's up, Wondering Serenity? How are you? I wonder why that spell's not affecting me right now. It's good RNG. Not sure? Oh no, what's up, man? Shit. Oh, it's moving down a few days, feeling blah. No, I understand. I get that. So we know he's gonna heal. What a pussy. Yokai, which are demons, right? Thirty-seven virtue from that. Okay. Parapakarin. Kumon is holding the townspeople captive in the castle's dungeons. Please save them. Oh, so all of these people were Tanukis. That's interesting. Sorry, I stopped tricking people. Huh. Damn. It's like everybody. They straight up are all nasty raccoon dogs. Alright, the question is, can I stay at the end at least? Go through Inner's Garden and you reach the next country. Can I just use the... Can I just use the inn? I don't like that at all, man. There's no guarantee I'll be able to kick this dude's butt. 
get out of the way. I don't know if I'm strong enough to beat him right now, and I don't want to get stuck in a shitty situation. We're not using save states as an excuse, by the way. Not doing that. Uh, we are going into what might be considered a dungeon. I gotta be careful because my L2 activates a turbo and it just goes donkey shit. Can I attack both of them? Why do I keep hitting it? Oh, it's just the arrow, okay. Two buttons acting up. Interesting. Fuck out of here. Yeah, my old two button is acting up. Can we not? Bum, ba -da -bum, bum, bum. All right, let's go ahead and save. All right, this is where we're going to wrap up for today. This is Sunday, so this is the shorter stream. Uh, for anybody who joined us late, feel free to check out the VOD. This is actually a very impressive game, and I'm actually having tremendous fun with it. I do look forward to continuing it, which we will. This is our next major RPG, so this is what we're going to be focusing on. All right. YouTube audience, expect a video out tomorrow. It will come out. It's going to be the top 10 Sega Genesis soundtracks, in my opinion, right? Um, and if you want to, come over here onto Twitch. There's a lot more you can do. You can interact with the stream a lot more. For example, stream loots cards, sound effects, channel points, etc. And if you don't like the project that you're seeing on YouTube, you can come on over, over to Twitch and change it. Because project changes are open. And they will be open. And then they're going to be discounted next month, 20,000 points. And until it gets down to like 20k points. And then by that time, somebody will probably activate the, the change. So yeah. Twitch audience, four things. If you haven't hit that follow button, please do. I would love to have you as part of this community. We're a warm, welcoming community of people who just really enjoy video games, no matter if they're good, they're bad, or just, you know, whatever, right? That's what we do here. I have a YouTube. I am a YouTube partner. Uh, that is my current way of making money. I make videos for y'all's entertainment, and I hope that you enjoy them, right? That's what I do at the end of the day. I have a Discord as well. That's where I post the schedule. That's where I post voting, which is important if you're part of the Twitch community. I do suggest that you join the Discord, at least so you're able to vote on some of the stuff that we do. Finally, if you have the channel points and you want to guide the raid, feel free to do so at this time. Otherwise, I'm going to find somebody playing an RPG which uh, we, we will never find in short supply. It, there's always somebody playing an RPG. What is this? What is this nasty shit? I don't want to see that. 
Live channels who think you're light? Not softcore porn, no. I'm good. Uh. Alright, is anybody doing anything fancy? No. Alright, I'm gonna list off some games. Y'all choose. Y'all. If any of these strike your fancy, just say, yeah, that one. Last Epoch. Pokemon Emerald, Baldur's Gate Enhanced. Oh no, he's ending. Um, Dragon's Dogma Two, Stardew Valley, Persona Three Reloaded, Stardew Valley, Fable Two. I tell you what, let's. We should probably go hang out with uh, Kilgore Trout because he raided us last night and we missed it like just ever so barely. Yeah, I think we're gonna go hang out. He's playing Fable Two, and I've always wanted to see what this game looks like, so we're gonna go hang out with him. Raid, Kilgore, Trout. All right, friends. As always, from my family to your family, good energy, good vibes. Fortify out. Keep the flames of hope burn burning, and the flames of retro gaming burning even stronger. We'll be back tomorrow with some Tyrion 2000. This is an override game. It's a vertical shooter, and it rocks. And I'm absolutely happy with it. That is not the correct Kilgore Trout. I don't know why that name even exists. Kilgore Trout. That's the raid we want to do. There we go. Mr. Egg himself. All right. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care. It's your game, Suki. We made it to episode two. It's really good. I actually like it.